And I'm used to doing three hour broadcasts on Twitch anyway, so. <laughs> we just caught that on broadcast. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is uh, this is Jack, your host extraordinaire for the Amazing Scale Modelers Across the Pond Hangout for the Amazing Scale Modelers uh, groups uh, on the Facebook uh, pages as well as on now MeWe. Uh, big announcement, uh, as you all well know, if you are on the Google Plus page, they are shutting down the 2nd of April. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to shut down on them first. So <laughs> shutting down uh, the Google Plus uh, community of uh, February 23rd. There are instructions uh, very widely pinned at the top of that page to find out how you can move over to MeWe. If you don't like MeWe, you can go to Facebook. If you don't like Facebook or either MeWe or Facebook, I can't help you. You're on your own. So uh, that that is going to happen. And what I was trying to find out, because you know what today is, everyone? 2nd of February. Yeah, I don't know what the 2nd of February is. Groundhog Day. Uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to look up what the Groundhog mm. had actually said so far. Well, yes, so he is. does not see his shadow, which means <laughs> the spring is around the corner. Yeah. That's unusual. And he's 50-50. His, his chance of getting it right is 50-50, actually. That's actually better prognostication than some of the uh, weathermen that I know. Uh, <laughs> you can never out. trust the weather, Jack. You can well, never trust the weatherman. That's true. I mean, we look at a big, fat rat and say, what, what's the weather going to be like? And he's right. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really you know Australia could do something like that, you know. Oh, the, the wombat, ground dog. A wombat? Yeah, I was going to say, hang a wombat out. See what <laughs> yeah, well, I think at your season, he'd be too hot to be going out and see what <laughs> Oh, well, oh, oh, it was oh. hot today. 37. Jeff, I'll send some over to you. I'll oh, send some over to you. Uh, so without fun, further right? ado, uh, I have really nothing much else to say. Jack, uh, I, well, there's one thing I do want to bring up. Uh, if you have noticed the invite on the community... It is a rehabbed, a rehabbed, a readjusted or redone uh, logo. Um, Matt got it done. It is now saying MeWe and Facebook, and that's the new one. I'm going to be making shop cards, and I want to make shop cards of yours. If you are interested, this is not a contest. Uh, if you want to uh, participate in creating a shop card that I will print and give to everybody, at my expense, not yours. All you got to do is spend the time making the graphics for a shop card. And uh, we'll see. Uh, among our moderators and us, the moderators don't even know about this yet. So they're just finding out right now. <laughs> now we'll kind of like go through it and see if we, if we want a little adjustments to make it nicer or whatever. Probably not. Anyway, we are we're that way. And we're going to do shop cards this, uh, this year. And we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff like that to share each other's pride in your community. Today we have joining us uh, Stephen Burns. He is a 3D artist. And I'll tell you what, this guy is... He's... he's, he's, he's who's making all that noise? Carwin. 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 <laughs> Hi, Carwin. Hello. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, he, he's, he's an extraordinary artist. He really is. We're going to show some of his work. He's going to show some of his work and what he does. And I think your guy's going to be, you, you folks are going to be pretty well floored with what he has to offer here. Uh, so, uh, Stephen. Yes, sir. Uh, we talked before, and there's one thing that caught my attention. And before we see what you do, how did you get involved with this and when? Oh my gosh! Um, I give him a whole historical background. Oh, no, not creative. <laughs> we only have two hours. I mean, you know. Oh my God! It may go to three. I mean, you know, <laughs> with, with this crowd, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be a fun crowd here. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank thank you guys for having me on the on here. Thank you, amazing, uh, you know, modelers. This is this this is gonna be fun. I, I you know I I had. Um, I just found out about this whole broadcast here, and it, it, it's amazing how this whole um, the social media thing and the whole YouTube concept of being able to to broadcast your own show is, is just it's really taken off, um, and it, and it's taken off in some some incredible directions. So, all right, um, I kind of started off um, just kind of give you a little bit of a historical background. Started off doing 
you know, and like like most kids, drawing and painting when I was when I was a kid, and then of course my career turned to photography, and I was a professional photographer for quite a number of years. Um, that that was before that was pre digital, by the way. Um, and then when digital came about, that was when I got involved in terms of using the computer um, to create. So uh, I think I think one of my original programs was was like using uh, Corel Painter. And there's another one called um, um, Eldest Photo Styler. I think I think Adobe had eventually bought them. But anyway, that that started with Photoshop, uh, doing a lot of um, 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 you know compositing and, and 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 creative stuff with photo manipulation. Originally, originally it was mostly commercial, but then that that transitioned toward the fine art. Fine art was really my was was my real love. Um, so from there, I, I kind of just you know started playing around with uh, 3D. A friend of mine turned me on to this program. Actually, I tell you what, the first 3D program I actually started with was um, was um, um, POV Ray, P O V Ray. I guess it stands for Persistence of Vision, um, and that was basically using command line to actually create your your, your 3D objects. From there, a friend of mine turned me on to. Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the name of the program now. It was called the uh, Bryce. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you guys remember Bryce, Bryce was that kind of the the, the three three D um, um, landscaping program. You can build your islands and skies and and just environmentals. Um, Bryce is a fun little program, but it was just very very slow. So m most professionals that didn't even bother taking to it. That kind of transitioned over to Poser. Um, and of course, this is before I learned about modeling. You know, this is this is way back when. Um, but I thought, but I that was my exposure to 3D, being being, being able to get used to this navigating this 3D interface and being uh, wild by the fact that we can put characters in the, in in a virtual world and we can animate them and move them around. And um, so so then that you know piqued my interest towards something a little bit more sophisticated. And I think that was when I transitioned toward Lightwave. Um, I think it was version 5.0 at the time. Um, and that that had to have been at least early 90s, 1990s, somewhere around there. Um, so from there, I just, you know, that 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 that's at the time that was the the industry standard program to use. That was that was pre-Maya. Um, Maya came along, of course, and kind of <laughs> taken over from the market in terms of the 3D program. And then you've got now got a free ones, which are actually outstanding, um, like Blender and and many many others out there. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean that that's uh, I I started playing around um, at earlier years, and then that transitioned toward um, writing books in in 3D. Uh, or, or as well as this combination of Photoshop and 3D. I've written about eight books so far. Um, and um, I guess we can talk about, talk about my website website a little bit later, criminalusion.com. You get to see a little bit little bit more of who I am. I um, started showing my work internationally and um, um, that, that transition to teaching. I'm currently teaching at about three different colleges right now. One of them being um, Otis, uh, um, Otis, um, 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 Arts, um, Arts College, um, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Santa Monica College and Golden West College. So um, I work in the digital imaging department. So I'm teaching a lot of the uh, the beginning to advanced uh, digital imaging uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, so now I I decided to um, kind of play around with um, 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 this concept of, of of marrying the 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 digital world. In terms of 2D and 3D, I think right now has been this is this is a very exciting time to be an artist, because for the first time in history, all creative mediums that we know as human beings can now all be done in this little one little box called a computer, mm -hmm. and that was there to be drawing and painting and poetry, making movies, architecture, um, you know, filmmaking, and 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 the fact that now that we ha have all of these. Um, creative concepts at, at our fingertips in one in one location and in, in one device, that has created a whole new breed of artists. So, <clears throat> so how do I get into this whole thing of of kind of building little you know models and toys and parts for people? Um, it's 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 fairly it's a fairly new concept. I was playing around with uh, um, building things on my Twitch channel and uh, Twitch dot twitch, twitch forward slash chromalusion. 
And it, um, I started getting people on Facebook saying, hey, you know what, can, uh, can you do this for me? Can you do, I, I, this is part I'm working on this model and I'm, I'm doing custom models. Could, could you build this little piece for me? I said, well, sure, why not? What, what the heck? And I started that post and then next thing you know, I get this huge response of people wanting me to build stuff for them. <laughs> Well, before you before you go on, uh, a sci-fi guys have a type of brief boxers question. <laughs> uh, Trek or Wars? Trek or Wars? Definitely Trek. All right, you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? But but Wars is real popular out there in the modeling community. Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, they're 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 doing some pretty creative stuff and tough stuff in terms of uh um 3d design and custom design um but but trek it's yeah it's it's i think the camaraderie among among the, the trek the, the uh, trek community is um is uh, is very interesting you know how i characterize the uh the trek <laughs> uh builders uh looking at their wars uh counterparts as little brothers who want to show off Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I think of them as trust fund babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pick on the warriors. Now you know the crowd that I keep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. That's right. Oh my gosh, I run the Lightwave Users Group, and it's uh, and, and we do our presentations online, and we get a lot of people from overseas. And it's like if you, you better have a very thick skin because they love to pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the culture, so I'm used to it. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Uh, you know, we're gonna. I'm gonna start with uh, something that is with the with the uh, Star Wars folks. And uh, let's see where to go. Uh, share and there. But I saw this. <clears throat> now this is War Star Wars. This is Star Trek. What am I saying? That's Katinga, my yeah, that's the Katinga yeah, you were showing me. Show. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's the Katinga you were showing me. Um, this is what got me all hot and bothered. Trust me, believe me. <laughs> um, so you 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 were just explaining all the different things that you're you're doing, or and you're bringing it together to do this sort of thing. Right, that's correct. And so, so this one, I mean, I think this was not one of the first projects. I mean, this is fairly recent. At first, I was doing mostly, mostly, you no know, custom design for you no know, Starship Enterprises, the one three fifty scale. Um, that's a big model. Uh, and then it transitioned to all these little things, anywhere from Star Trek to Star Wars. But this one here is the uh, um, the veneer to the uh, the 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 what the, the, the Katinga class uh, Klingon um, battle cruiser. So this, um, I guess, I think I'm trying to remember who it was. It was actually Gene Smith and Chuck Brooks that contacted me to design this. So they wanted they wanted to kind of change the uh, the warp nacelle to be some to look very very different or more dynamic um, on on screen. So I figured we figured like, heck, you know, why why couldn't we just cut those cut a panel out of it and then replace these in there, replace the, the, the torpedo tubes with, with something that I custom designed. They look a lot more dynamic. So they can, these torpedo tubes, um, there's a lot of detail in here. Basically, they're, they, it's hard to see with the naked eye, but once you paint it up and light it, light it from behind, I designed it so that you see a lot of that, that little star type of a detail all the way to the back of the, uh, of the, of, of the, uh, the launch tube. And then that, and that detail comes forward towards your toward the eye. So you, I wanted to give uh, um, you know the torpedo launch effect a, a three dimensional effect. Um, I think what came with the model kit was a little bit more, you no know, two dimensional and, and and feel and look and feel. But I wanted I want I wanted I want detail coming from all the way to the back of the ship or, or the tube all the way to the front of the tube. So I, so it becomes more of a dynamic uh, experience. Beautiful. Uh, I got a question, Stephen. Yes, sir. Could that could that actually be used for, like, say, if someone wants to do a bird of prey? Could that be used for the bird of prey as well? Yes. In fact, ah. in fact, I'm doing I'm doing one for the bird of prey as we speak. Um, ah. <laughs> I'm a little behind on finishing up because I've gotten the, um, um, 
a um, little bit sidetracked with the with the a recent one that I did with redesigning the bridge of the uh, of the Enterprise. But um, but this one, but yeah, this this can be adapted for the Bird of Prey as well. I am doing one for the Bird of Prey. It's going to be a different design. Um, but keep your eyes posted on my Facebook page. Uh, I should have something out within the next few days or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So uh, I guess uh, I got your uh, appetites wet, everybody. <laughs> he, he is now your victim to... Uh, <laughs> these are thinking. They're, they're conspiring. Listen to this. They're it's probably too, if it's my people, they're probably still asleep. <laughs> well, um, the, uh, the uh, live hangout, they're just saying good morning to each other. For the past almost 20 minutes, they're saying good morning to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they are still asleep. Uh, yay for uh, Steven's sensibility. Liam, you should be here. Uh, and uh, let's see. They're just saying good morning to each other. They're just uh, filing in. And can someone send me a link, please? Well, Jamie, it is on the it is on the communities. You're gonna have to log into your community. So there you go. Uh, so this is all 3D printed, and there's a lot. And Liam, the reason Liam, I want Liam here is because he just bought his 3D printer and he's ah. just having a good time with it. And you said something, and I, I, I've had interest in a 3D printer for like two years now. Right. And I think you put, I think you crushed me when we talked. <laughs> Hope, uh, hopefully nicely. <laughs> you said something, no, you said something that made total sense. And it's like, you know what? That's probably why I've been hesitating buying one. Uh, because if I'm going to use one, I want to use it up to its design abilities. You right. Know? Maybe even then some. And uh, you, you you said you kind of have to have some sort of basis in 3D drafting, CAD work. Yes. Because right. uh, even, even Jim has to modify any files that he gets off the, inter the internet to be able to uh, uh, print it. Like he built, he, he printed a T-Rex, a, a skeleton T-Rex, right. and he... He said he had to modify that to be able to print it, and you have to have some uh, ability to. And where can one go to get that kind of uh, tutelage? To um, um, this, that's very interesting because I've been getting a lot of requests about starting a uh, a small class in three D. Um, I I'm self taught. I mean, I learned this stuff before there was a such thing as digital in the classroom. Um, I mean, I learned my skills in Photoshop and 3D, um, I mean, way, way early. So, I mean, now today, if you really want to get a good skill set, go to a local community college. Um, I mean, and, 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 and learn and kind of learn that way. I think that's one of the, the I think it's a, it's a nice solid way to, 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 to kind of polish your skill set still. Because you're in the classroom with other, with other students who's going to be designing things with you. You're going to get ideas from them. You're going to have an instructor there that's going to correct you on your mistakes as well as guide you in the proper way to, to create the, nice, the, the proper poly flow um, in your geometry. So um, that, you know, I, I've been getting so many requests about that. I thought, well, maybe I should probably start a little bit of a class, you know, something where anybody from anywhere in the world can jo join online use your headset um, I, and I'll start giving you some basics of modeling for the purpose of 3D printing. Um, and you're absolutely right. And a lot of people see what I'm doing online and they get inspired and they're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go buy a 3D printer and I'm gonna do that. Well, no, you're not gonna do that. <laughs> because, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna buy a 3D printer and you're gonna be pretty much um, stuck to downloading models off of these free modeling sites to print and then where's the joy in that because mm -hmm. the, the, the printers are slow as hell um takes a lot of time to print learning how to use them is a real pain and um and if you want the real good quality high resolution you're gonna be printing sometimes for days um yeah. um if you need to modify anything you need to understand what you're modifying and why you're modifying it yeah um it's you know you need to have those those, those 3D skill sets. 
so, so you know, there, there are programs out there that are free for three D. Actually, there's a, there's a couple of them. I forget the one that's 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 free that's made by uh, Pixelogic that makes ZBrush. Um, that's a good one to use. Another good one is Blender. Is free. Blender is absolutely outstanding. It's it's a pro package. It's it's it has everything in it that the pros would use in the real world, except pros don't use it, which is why it's not in the end. It's not industry standard. But um, but Blender is is outstanding. So and it's free. It's it's open source. So if you are not used to 3D, I would say. Um, jump in and, and and learn Blender and learn it from a, from a professional um, standpoint. Um, there's some real simple ones out there. I think one's called SketchUp. Um, yeah. Google, yeah. Google makes that, right? Yes, Google SketchUp. Yeah, and there's uh, Cinema 4D. Yeah, and C Cinema 4D is very is actually very popular with um, with the animation community. Yeah. Um, their, their focus gear is geared more to animation. But yes, you can do modeling. You can do modeling in practically any any packages out there. I use Lightwave. They just released a new version about a week ago called Lightwave 2019. It, it's it's been it, it was the original um, um, industry standard 3D animation compositing package, um, and it's still here and it's still yeah. growing. Yeah. Um, wasn't uh, wasn't Babylon Five done in Lightwave? That's right. Babylon, was, yeah, they, 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 they originated it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, it, 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 the the industry went from vector-based graphics to raster-based graphics in yeah. the early Pixar days, right? And then, and then when they went from from uh, when they came to making Babylon Five, they actually daisy chained computers together to make a render farm, right? And then that's right. And then and that, uh, that, became, that became Render Man, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, imagine that. Yeah, yeah. What, what was it? It's like twenty-four mega computers all daisy chained together, right. just to use rendering <laughs> software. And and, 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 that, could render, and it, I think it took a, a day to render, like you, you know, a, a five-second sequence. Now, now, notice everybody. He mentioned something. He said, he said, Amiga computers. Mm -hmm. That is where Lightwave started on the Amiga. Yeah. It, it, when you bought the Amiga computer, Lightwave came with the Amiga. It was already on there. Yeah, and of course. And, uh, yeah, that, 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 I, I think that's what revolutionized uh, it into, um, you know, people being able to do their own uh, CG. Cause that, that's, that's kind of where I had a start. Um, I stopped doing stuff like that when I left school, but then years later I ended up uh, getting into, uh, what was it, True Space. Right, that's right. Uh, uh, True Space was a, really one of the transition then from True Space then into right. 3DS Max. So... Right. That's right. I've, I've got one on here, and it's still, I think it's still around. It's called Carrera. Remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. How do you find, how do you find switching over platforms, though, when, you, when, you, when you've gone from, like, because obviously all the interfaces, that you mentioned Maya as well, and Maya is uh, owned by Autodesk as well, who also do the right. PDS Max. Um, so they've got similar interfaces, but the interfaces are, uh, you know, the icons are different, the interfaces are, are, are in a different arrangement. Um, the language is pretty much the same, right? You know, when you're dealing with things like Boolean and vectors and and, and policies, right. uh, all all that sort of stuff. But obviously, like you know, is there? Do you notice a big time factor in, in the change from one platform to the other? So, you know, from my like, from from my personal experience, when when I was I started in True Space, as I said, with with that, and that was sort of a more of a, a your basic, your, yeah, your sort right. of if you can start off in. But then when you transition to something like 3ds Max, then which is sort of a you know it's an industry software, right? It's <laughs> you got flow uh, dynamics and, and things like that in, in, in the software. So how, how do you find changing over the from one interface to another? Um, there is there is always going to be a learning curve, and this and this is one of the caveats I kind of want to put out there for those who want to get into 3D modeling. Uh, or, or 3D printing, that when you learn your 3D modeling program, it's a learning curve. Yeah, um, it, 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 like I, I, I use primarily Lightwave and ZBrush, and mm -hmm. um, and and now you know, and now maybe and and also Substance Painter, which Adobe just bought, by the way, um, as of two weeks ago. Um, but but ZBrush. It's a hell of a pain in the rear to learn. Yes. I mean, 
I mean, it, and, and Maya is the same way. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go from, it's not like you go from Photoshop to another paint program, which you can probably quickly pick up the other paint program fairly, fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, in the 3D world, it is not like that. Every company has, specific, has specifically designed their software um, to work in a certain in a certain way in a certain <clears throat> work. So yes, the concept of polys and points and the concept of creating geometry is all the same thing, but the workflow for each of those each software is completely different from one from one to another. Oh, yeah. So um, trying to learn ZBrush after you've learned you know. A, a, a poly based or a, or a hard modeling program like Max, like like um, Lightwave, um, yeah. like Maya, it's it's crazy. I mean, all ZBrush is 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 three D modeling for sculptors. So you yeah. have to have a stylist like my stylist. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say you, the transition yeah. to on ZBrush yeah. is with, yeah. a, with right. a graphics right. tablet from a mouse to a graphics tablet. Yeah, I, I worked with Wacom for 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 decades, I and mean, I, I was one of their um, their lead pro artists. I'm the guy. I'm the guy they sent the the Disney and DreamWorks to actually show them how to use the Wacom tablet for your workflow. So now, and that would be part of my class, by the way, would be if I did a class in 3D, is is how to use the the tablet's important because because now, um, you know, Lightweb just integrated you no know, uh, um, sculpting into their system. ZBrush has had it from this from the get go. Yeah. Um, you have to learn both hard base, hard hard surface modeling, as well as um, sculpting style modeling. Yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. have to. So yeah, I mean, there, there, there's there's a lot of learning to be lot, the huge learning curve. And I can see people buying a 3D printer and then getting excited at first, and then it sits in the corner because all the time they have to put into learning yes. the software, and then all the time to print. It's not like a well. Uh, it's not. It's not only that as well. You've got to. You've got to understand the model. Understand yeah. how the model is going to break apart because that, it, that, it's you it, oh in a particular way. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, this is it's that design. It's that critical thinking and mm -hmm. not um, creative thinking where you got to think about how is it going to print. Why? Because you've got gravity. Yeah. <laughs> gravity, yeah. gravity yeah. is a real problem. <laughs> yeah, you you can print stuff for the supports, but then you've got you you've got a large waste of material as well. That's so right. you've got to work out which way is the best way to orientate there, which but, is the best way to slice it. Yeah, and then you got to figure out how all the pieces are going to go together. So you have to do that from the very beginning. Like when I'm about yeah. to, I'm going to build, like like I was just hired to uh, build a full a full enterprise, mm -hmm. and um, for a guy that actually works at NASA, he works with the astronaut at NASA. But anyways. Um, and I got to think about it in that in that designing stage. How am I going to break this apart? Okay, here's the saucer section I'm building. All right, is how am I going to do this? Is this am I going to do it in two halves? If so, um, you know how you know how 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 do I want to make sure I want to build it in such a way that it's going to fit flush onto that onto the plate? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if, work within the limitations of your printer too. Right, within, that's right. How how big Does is it? my printer? I mean, can I build, should I, do I have enough room to build up or out? I mean, the biggest I can build right now is, is what, 20 inches? So mm -hmm. I got to fit within that 20 inch plate. I, mean, I got a bunch of smaller ones too, but the 20, I got to build on that 20 inch plate. You know, what, I mean, maybe the saucer section to go on there. That's going to be my biggest piece. And then maybe the warpness saw is going to be printed on my medium sized printer or smaller printers because yeah. they're going to be building upwards. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, and that's just. I mean, it's just okay. It's, it's, not, it's not only that. It's the, it's the fact that you got you got to calibrate the printers as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Bed leveling. Uh, you've got sometimes you get failed prints, and it could be from uh, the, the bed could be too hot, the bed yeah. could be too cold. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you get lifting, cooling, all all that sorts of stuff. Um, I mean, it's it's not what people think of. I mean, when the, when the idea of a 3D printer is that you can, you can put this thing in your in this little box in the corner of your room, get a model and print a model out. But the, the, the reality is, you know, as a test model, yes, you can do that. You, you yeah. can, and usually you get a 3D printer that comes with a test model, you know, and it's usually, uh, you know, a boat or uh, one of those uh, cats, you know, you know, as a variety. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you, you you get you get that, but if you're gonna do anything more complex, you've got to know how the, the thing breaks down. In terms of, um, I mean, simple things. I, I just printed up a car seat uh, uh, last night. 
uh, but it turns out it printed out, and it's actually in the wrong size. It's actually yeah. it's actually a quarter of an inch too small, which doesn't sound a lot, but on a scale uh, car seat, a quarter of an inch when you scale it up is you know it's a foot out, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's that's going to be redone again. Um, but these little factors, and sometimes as well when you when you model something, you've got to take it to the tolerances of the printer. So if you make something that's like tongue and groove, yeah. Right. You've got, you've got to take it to the tolerance of the thickness of this is going to fit inside that right. groove. Right. So right. If, you, if, you, if you just cut it out and just try to fit those two parts together, you're going to find that you're going to be sanding this out to make it quite much to fit this part in. So otherwise, it just won't fit. Yeah, he's, he's so right about that. And what's, what's real interesting about the stuff that I'm doing is that the client says, I want this like this to fit into this or to mm -hmm. that. Now I've got to figure out, okay... Um, and and, and sometimes they'll just draw the designs on paper, yeah, and and and, and, and so photograph it with their camera and send it to me. No uh, dimensions or anything, yeah. No, no dimensions. I want that to fit in here. Then I have to tell them, okay, what are the dimensions here? Um, or or here's a common question. This is a good question. So I build like the uh, the warp nacelle end caps for the one three fiftieth Enterprise, and then someone says, you know what? Can you adapt this to the one one thousands? I said, <laughs> sure. Just give me the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the size of it? That's right. It's kind of no. It's the same thing. <laughs> Give me the dimensions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I have. I am going to ask a question from Kevin, but first, uh, I want to do a share uh, of something that I have been running uh, as you guys were talking. Uh, the stages from uh, CAD to a final. Uh, this is uh, this is a kit that you're putting together for the. Uh, I do believe the 536 uh, kit, not the 350. This is um, the no. This is for the 350. Oh, this is the 350. That's for that's for the 350. Now this is one of those custom jobs where the client and I've got you know, um, gave, sent me the saucer section and says, you know what, I want to do an intermediate build between the Constitution class original and the Enterprise a refit. So. Mm -hmm. I want to use my imagination. I want to. I want to build something as to what I think it's going to look like if that 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 what the intermediate intermediate transit transition would be. So this is it. He says, take this original style and put it in. I, I want to put it into the new refit. So he he sent me you no know, visuals of what he was looking for. I I, I built it inside of um, Lightwave sent him screen captures and he says oh that's great that looks good go with it um i measure the rings because you know notice that the that that the bridge is actually set inside the rings if you go back there you go yeah. the bridge is built into the rings so i figure it will be easier just to, to find that first ring on the on on your model and then build that ring plus the bridge so that all you need to do is just cut out that ring to replace it with this um, circular plate, right? And yeah. then you have your your new your new ship, right? Right. That well, that makes that makes uh, total sense. Uh, I I don't know. Somehow I thought you were uh, in a in a short film you were showing the uh, the five thirty six uh, kit, not the three fifty kit. Yeah, you, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's like but like we just uh, can resize it. Yeah, I can resize it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Design it once, and all you got to do is resize for the. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, just tell tell me the dimensions of your ring, your base there, and then I the diameter, and then I'm good to go. Right, right. And it'll resize proportionally. Well, so this brings me to Kevin's uh, question: that you are both sneaking up on a D7 conversion parts for the one three fifty Contiga kit and for the Proteus resizing for those right. who want smaller scale of uh, quote smaller scales. That right. never were. I think that's between you and him. Any sneak peeks or news on those? Okay, yes. <laughs> so the guy, well, the man who created this monster of Stephen building these little you no know, custom you no know, designs for people, <laughs> the man the man who's responsible for it is Steve Smith. Uh -huh. Um the man who's 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 taken up the mantle and really can have me doing doing this stuff has been Gene Davis. Okay. And um, so 
<clears throat> so they've been throwing these ideas and you got to do this, you got to do this. This is what the community works and wants. And one of them is the Proteus, um, uh, like a, a, a four inch, you know, <clears throat> a four inch in length um, mm -hmm. Proteus uh, from the movie uh, Fantastic Voyage. <clears throat> so, um, and then there's many other stuff coming up. So, and I'm and just, I mean, as soon as I get an idea from a client or get hired by a client to do something, I, I, I put it out there to say, hey, you know, this is what we just did. Um, wouldn't this be cool on your model? Um, I think yeah, the Proteus was one of your comments. What was the other one that the, that the person was looking for? It was the uh, D7. Hmm. Yes, already working on it. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm building the the head of the D7 um, um, and also doing some customizations for that. Um, in addition to the D7, I'm doing customizations for the Katinga Bridge, uh -huh. where just designing the bridge alone, I'm detailing it out. So that's what, this is what, what's, this is what's really fun about 3D printing. When everybody else, you see all those details, those models out there that you're seeing on, on, on Facebook, these guys, these guys are doing some incredible stuff. And I was blown away as, 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 what the, what, as, as the, what the community is doing with this. I mean, I had no idea this existed for in, in, until fairly recently, but people are adding in all types of little nodules and, and, and doodads and, or greebles, you want to call them, onto their model, where in a 3D program, I can actually build that into it. And print it and print that detail out so that you you guys the user don't have to do that so mm -hmm. and it can be done in, 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 in an individual custom in, in custom way so it's kind of fun oh I bet it is I, I bet it's very fun <clears throat> uh, when we were talking earlier um, you you came out with I think you showed me at least two if not three different versions of the uh, 350 nacelle end caps. Right, right. And I, I made sure I had that and in, in, um, all primed to go in lightweight before I came on so I can actually show them to you. Yeah. <laughs> to um, are you, well, even if you had the physical <clears throat> thing, that would be okay. Because what you showed, you did variations. Uh, and the variations you were explaining. Right. And customize it any way you'd like, like the exactly. two, <laughs> like the torpedo two. We got the three fifty Katinga, right? Uh, and the, what I, what got me about your designs is there's so much hidden underneath the surface. Right, when you backlight it or light it, it comes alive. Right, it literally comes right. alive. Right, when I when I when I did my first job with the warp missile, I was just designing a custom solid plastic piece, um, and I. Um, and, I've, and I'll, I'll grab it. I've got them so around here somewhere. But um, my, my original idea was, was, was to do a solid piece just, just for the initial design. Um, and then I found out by, by printing it in solid, it, it, it opened up a lot more problems. And that um, it, it's such a big, thick, solid piece of plastic, you can get all types of little you know, you know, issues with, with, with the 3D printer or... or or little little defects on the outside that you don't always want because when if I'm printing for a client, I don't want any defects. I want it looking, you know, real clean, real tight, real nice tight detail. Um, um, so what I did was I I've learned to hollow them out just just strategically. Then I realized <clears throat> from all the comments on Facebook when I was posting this, posting this, people say, "Oh wow, that's really cool," but but could you light this and, and are you able to light that? And I thought, oh shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm, so I'm gonna build it to light it. So I started building it got to at first it, I was hollowing it out to and, and printing it in white to allow them to, 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 to light it. Then I realized, you know what, I don't need to do that. You don't want you don't want the nacelle in caps to light up. You want them to stay opaque. So why don't I just build the ball with, with various different designs? Hollow it out, design it in such a way that you can put an LED light, LED light inside, and then snap that onto the end of your nacelle end cap to get a really cool lit up piece. And but I would also add other ports inside the nacelle end caps where you can light from behind the ball as well. So the whole thing really comes alive and and uh, and visually um, um, analyzing, so to speak. And I can share that with you. On a on a on a on a screen capture too. Sure, sure. 
Uh, as you're doing that, uh, if you are doing that, um, somebody said yeah, how that I... they're looking forward to putting my putting their hands on that Proteus. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I Gene Davis actually, so but that's that's me. Yeah, well, Gene Davis <laughs> said if if I did the Proteus, um, there's a huge demand for it. Uh huh. So I think that's kind of the sentiment that I'm seeing here. Um, let's see if I, let me let me how, let's see, how do I share my screen? Uh, right, uh, this is a little different than the uh, private one. If you put oh. your cursor over the screen and the left hand side, the second one down should be like a little green screen with an arrow in it. Okay, hold there you found it. Tab, and a menu found comes it. up, and you there's two tabs on the menu. Yeah, I found it. Okay, so if I click on that one, I think it says screen share. The first one says screen share, and then, then it'll say uh, other sources. Which, if it's in a different screen or a different program you got up on your screen, right? It says use application window or screen. Yeah. I want. I want screen. You want the application window. I want the application window. Yeah. yeah. Hold on a minute. Your entire screen. Oh, there it is. Application. There it is. Got it. I have to click. The thing is, I was clicking on the the, the window thumbnail of it, and it wasn't doing anything. I had to no. click on the word application window. That was stupid. Yeah. Okay. So now. It's not the gray is still it's still grayed out, or Nvidia. You have to have that window open, and at least in the background. Yeah, you have to have the that window open on your computer. You okay. got it open well, on your computer. Yeah. Well, what your your files that you have the uh, the, the the image on open. Oh open wait a minute! After the application, okay. So Lightwave yeah. is hold on a minute. Lightwave is already open. You have to you have to pop it up so. Yeah. So to click screen oh, share, okay, click so, application, click Lightwave. Okay, so you guys can see my screen right now, right? Okay, I'll go ahead and, and say share with everybody. Oh, got it. Okay, that, that's, that's what was throwing me off. I thought instantly it was going to happen. So I'm used to using Adobe Connect. Uh, yeah. All right, so everybody can see Lightwave interface? No, I'll just see your face right you now. You can't <laughs> If you see it, they you click on it, then it should say share. Um. Okay. Oh, I see. There it is. Okay. This is weird. This is a stupid way to hold on a minute. Let me go get lightweight. Oh, there there's it. a learning curve. Don't be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I mean, I mean, it's stupid. So stupid. You okay. understand? <laughs> so I, I clicked on the interface, but it doesn't. But the share button is still grayed out. As, you know what? I have trouble with this too. I, I, I admit, like, so it's probably not you. Uh, well, we did this before when you and I were on uh, last week. It's di yeah, broadcast is, works differently than uh, private hangout, and that's even. Oh, there we go. There we go. We see it. Oh, I had to double click on it. Yeah. There you go. The, the, the clicking, the, the share, by, the, the share, the great share box. Okay, uh, there we go. All that's right. Lightwave we're seeing. We're looking at lightweight. All right, cool. All right, now what I'll do is I'll share. I will start with the cell in cast because that's what you guys are asking about. Yes. So let's go over here, and I got a little. This is everything I want. I figured I'll show you today. Here's my warp in cell in cast. We'll start with the first one. Go ahead and open it up. So as you can see here, I've got you know my you know all three D programs are going to allow you to work in a a top, um, back of front or in right view. Let's go ahead and view this on on the um, the perspective view, and so this was actually one of the original ones that I designed, the first one, and I discovered that when you 3D print stuff, now you look at this, and I'm thinking, okay, this looks great on screen, mm -hmm. but trying to print all these little you know yeah. ridges, all it'll, the ripping, yeah, right, mm -hmm. it, it'll do it, but visually it doesn't look that appealing. So I had to learn to design things larger. It's like being an actor, right? If you wave your hand in real life, it's not like waving, waving your hand and as an actor. You need more exaggerated movements so yeah. that the viewer can try. So that's so when you 3D print things, you need a little bit more more larger exaggerated shapes, um, so that visually it 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 looks accurate. Um, here. These smaller shapes down here in the bottom are too small. Yeah. Um, I had to redesign it so that these were wider, thicker. Um, then it came out looking great. 
um, these you can see here, this is the rings in here. This the lights show through here. Mm -hmm. the, you put it, you put in lighting from behind, and um, maybe this is the wrong one that I have, but uh, but yeah, and then the lights will come through right, right through there. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at another. Um, number two. This was a fun one. Ooh. All okay. right. Just this so one. that you know, I have queued up the physical object that you printed, but continue on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can see where, whereby uh, some of the shapes have been slightly exaggerated for the print. Right. Because, it, again, you, you're right, you, you print something off and you think, because you can, you can make a model as small as you like in a 3D package. Right. But the second you print it off, all that work that you is just gone. <laughs> right. So this one here, I did like a double um, hood. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can, I can, I'll break this down on layers for you. I've got this on layers. Uh, how about this? Yep. Uh, hold on a second. I did it wrong myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, you see what I'm uh, doing? Ah. Yes. So he's got the, he's got different uh, he's got the different layers here. Is what he's uh, uh, these are three different ones that he showed uh, me earlier when we talked. Right, I see it. Yes. Uh, so yeah, you got multiple layers here. Continue. <laughs> right. So, so the one we're looking. See which one are we looking at? Let me go back to light wave here. Um, we're looking at is that one on there? Okay, I I can't I can't remember. So so yeah, same concept. So I build as I as I as I say I build everything in layers so that if the client says change this or change that, I can do it. So remember I was talking about lighting things up. This ball lights up from the inside. If you turn it around, you can see, um, you know I've got this you know hollowed out. So that the LED light will sit right inside, and then these these concentric rings here um, adds a nice little visual detail. Now, what some people, what I designed it to be, is that the red areas is going to be painted um, opaque, and then the the yellow areas will be these nice little you no know, rings, concentric um, ring, rings, you no know, showing through the back of the cell. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm just seeing his cursor flying around the screen. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's what I'm seeing. I, yeah. I thought maybe it was just me. <laughs> I see the workspace, but no uh, model. Yeah. Oh, interesting. What's happening here? Let's see what's happening. All right. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to go over to. Ah. Well, it's still saying I'm sharing, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. <laughs> I just thinking those end caps without the ball in the middle would make for pretty cool looking uh, photon tubes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I think they look good oh. in middle. That's true. Oh. Are you guys seeing seeing light wave or is it is it the light wave workspace but no model? Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see something. Unless you're what about, what about, about now? Now I see four squares. Okay, what's happening is when I go to full screen on 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 the um, perspective side, yeah, it, it cuts out. So I won't do that anymore. What I'll do is I'll just uh, pull this on over. There we go. It's oh, like the model. We just see what? the space. Yeah. If you, you look at Jack's uh, image, there, uh, that the is strange. That's that's what we're seeing. So you're seeing just a workspace with no model in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just your cursor moving about. So what, what, you know, what's up with Google? This just, <laughs> or, or, or YouTube. Is it YouTube? No, it's, it's Google. Google. It's Google. Yeah. All right. If all else well, fails, blame no. Google. Oh, crap. There is a, uh... So what I have uh, uh, got brought up, you're talking about one of these, uh, one of the balls here is uh, hollow. That's right. So, I mean, let me take a look at this. All right, good. All right, so basically, the, all the white balls are hollow inside. Okay. And then they're sitting on a stand, and the stand is basically a cylindrical tube that, that, that inserts into the hollow ball, 
and then and that and that cylindrical tube is, is is hollow inside as well so that you can fit the wiring from behind and and into the tube take the ball off um put the wiring in through the tube put the led light inside the uh the ball i forget what it's called there's an actual name for this um and then the wires come out the back so it can make Something like space displacement coil or something. Is that what it's called? Space. No, I thought it was called the end cap. <laughs> we just call it an end cap, right? <laughs> no, but, but yeah, there's an actual technical name for it, and I forget what it is. Somebody actually um, posted on Facebook what it, you know, what the name, what it was called, and I, I, I didn't write it down. Um, and the same thing here. I mean, here, all of these here from, from right inside the, with the double hood, you can actually put one color LED light so it lights in around the inside the hood and another LED light inside the ball. And they all do that. Ah. So I thought it was kind of a fun little way of, uh, of, of reinterpretation of the, of the Enterprise. This one here, if you see in the inside the grout area, um, you go all the way down to the bottom. Those are open little rectangular shapes like that 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 um, spans around a circumference of the um, of this support for the ball, uh -huh. so that you can put one LED light that that shines one color from around the edges and another LED light inside the ball. So it adds for a nice little visual display. Yeah, yeah, it's fun stuff. Um, And I've, I've forgotten. I've, I've forgotten all this stuff I had posted on Facebook. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. You can't. Um, you are screen sharing. I'm still screen sharing. What if I? What if I stop screen sharing and try it again and okay. see what happens? Yeah, try reloading it. Yeah. All right. Try reloading it. So if I click on screen share, because okay. it never that that share button is, is always grayed out. It never really. So let me cancel it. Hit screen share again. Double click this one. All right. Are you... Space energy slash matter. Oh, there we go. We got there we are. We got it now. Yeah. Okay, so, so, yeah. Yep. We got your model. Oh, great! Wonderful. Okay. Well, we'll start this over again then. Okay. So, what was that? What, what is the ball called? According according to the old uh, Starfleet ma technical manual. Space energy stroke matter source, and then in brackets field restoration. <laughs> you know I can call it the muffler. All right, so I'm going. I'm going to maximize the perspective side. Do you see that? Just just the model now alone. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Ah, good. All right, good. Let's go back to the beginning then. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, this was um, that's the one. That's the original one we started with. Yeah. Okay. So this one is designed. Now I think you saw this one, right? Yes. Okay. So it was it was a, it was a second one where um, for some reason the screen blanked out. Um, all right. So we'll go to this one here. Okay. So here is like I was I was I was mentioning. If you look right down in here. This one this one's kind of a double area. You can put lights in. You got the outside right in between the hood and the outside, and also on the inside. And then you have the lights. So I'm I'm going to break this apart in layers here. So All if right. I come over here, yeah, this is the typical one right here. I think. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So there's the hood. All right. There's the that's the interior. Oh, that is so cool. All right. So that, right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> it actually looks like it can be real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I surface it so it has that, that nice metallic look to it. Right. Um, I can so, and here's the actual support. See that? Yeah. That's where and I have to think all this through when I'm modeling this stuff. The wires will come through here. The LED will go into the ball, and there's the ball. And if we, and if I, um, <clears throat> the ball's hollow, hollowed, hollowed out inside. So the idea was that all the red areas here will be 
this the bar will be printed in, in white or translucent white. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the, the user can either keep the ball solid white as one piece or actually paint over these little grooves here so they're opaque so that what you get is these concentric rings glowing with the color that you put inside the LED light. LED light is. Nice. <clears throat> All right. So okay. So let's go to let's let's go take a look at another one. That was number two. Um the cell number three. <laughs> let's pop that on up. There's another version. Similar to the other one, but a little bit different. Yeah. A little bit stronger gateways coming through here. I think I, uh, let's see, I think I got the physical one uh, queued up. Got the physical one queued up? Let me take a look with it. Take a look there as well. It looks, it looks like it. No, that, 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 no that's different. Oh, that one I, have, I, think that, I think I have that one as number four. Oh, okay. Um, that, that one's coming up. So let me go back to uh, on to your image. There you go. Right. They go to go to light wave. And um, let's go over to get the other one. I think that's there we go. Oh, let's see. What have I got there? Here, I've got too many of them here. Oh, no. This is the, oh, like this actually is, pretty cool that you had uh, some sort of like warp sequence where that ball. Uh, uh, is sunk in, but it comes out when it goes to warp. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that would be fun. Put some actuator in there to push it out, and uh... all right. <laughs> so as you can see, <laughs> see this one here. The ball, it, it looks like it's sunken more inside. It's not the way I designed it. If I go, actually, let me go to the ball itself. Okay, and let's replace that one. Let's go to our three D views here. And let's switch the um the ball. Put let's bring the ball forward, right about there. That's and you can kind of see in this view. That's kind of where it should be. Actually, let me move this up a little bit, like to there. That All right, like that mm -hmm. would be a pretty cool effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. That's the way it should look. So, Stephen, when you're sending all this to output, do you break it apart into Yep. Like in the inner core and the outer the outer shell to okay. print that way. So this is how I strategize it. I print. Um, let's see. I print that by itself because that's going to be the stand. Mm -hmm. I print the ball by itself because that needs to be a separate piece. Yep. Um, um, everything else I print as one piece. Because I can't imagine getting any paint in there. Um, yeah, you can you can actually get paint in here pretty well. Actually, use your airbrush or mm -hmm. air, 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 airbrush or your or your spray can, whatever you're using. Um, spray it, spray it all in there because it's basically all going to be one all one color, uh, with the exception of of, of what you're going to do to these areas out here, and uh -huh. that's all exposed in front. So you can easily get in there. I, I I do think about what the what the user's experience is going to be when it comes to painting this as well. So now, do I have these broken down in parts so that it makes it easier for them to paint? Mm. I mean, I, I suppose I could design it so that there are several different individual pieces where this comes out and they can paint that as one, and then paint this. Make yeah, it easier because to I'm imag I'm imagining that the, it's a it would be a natural thing to have the shell, the outer shell, be a piece, and then right. the that inner working be yeah. a separate piece. And then the ball be yet another piece that would just allow more options and uh, for people you know what? With lesser skill sets to still be able to, to get a good paint in there. I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and this is kind of the feedback that I get from people. And this is a, a valuable feedback because um, um, I'm constantly thinking um, about the printing aspects of it, but I'm not always thinking about, um, you know, the painting aspect of it. Yeah, so, my mind goes to painting first. Right. Right. So, um, so yeah, I think um, that's not, oh, we'll use that one. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, there's the back end. So this this back end opens up. You can see you can see right through there. Uh huh. Right. Right through. The, so that you can put lights from behind it, and um, and then it lights up around the rim. 
um, of the interior of the of the nacelle. Um, it adds for a nice little. Let's see if I kind of take this. Kind of bring it on inside. Yeah, you can see right on right right on the room. You can see right through there. So we go from the front. Yeah, so you get the lights coming through from the side. So it adds for a nice little uh, lighting there. Let me let's, let's share with with you. Let's see. Let's uh, close all these out. To conserve our memory here. Um, don't say okay. Okay, let's go share with you. Um, oh, you want to see the um, um, the torpedo um, launchers for the for the Katinga class? Sure, sure. Absolutely. All right, I tell you, what, we'll see. I tell you, I'll show you the, the the veneer first. So I've got two yeah. two types of veneer. Um. So that's one of them. And when I designed this, I wanted to add more slots in here or grills. But I realized that, you know what, this is going to be printed smaller um, and it may not look that great. So I made them thicker, limited the number of grills I put in here, but I designed it so that it had an interesting little pattern on well, top of Even though you can have somebody uh, get a photo wedge for that and it can come out as, as small as you want it to be. A photo wedge would work better. For that's you. true. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, now that, that's. You got that's, different grills too. So. Yeah. That, yeah, that's right. Photo etch is, um, um, adds a nice little look to it, but yeah. I can also go to a smaller nozzle. I mean, I can go, but the, the, the average size nozzle is a 0.4. Yes, of a yeah. millimeter. Uh, this, I think, I was printing with a point two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd say about photo etch is it would be a much better light block. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and and, and here, <coughs> photo etch adds a nice little you know three dimensionality to the piece too. It has a nice, beautiful, um, you know, grunge texture look to it. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, let's let's get about that though. It's because he's got the file there. If he saved the file as an STL, it can transfer it to a CAD. He can actually do it as yep. photo etch. Right. Yep. Oh, that's right. Very good. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. Oh, this is the longer version to, to represent the Chrono style Starship. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I put a lot more detail into this one. You can see the... Ah. Uh. Nice little, nice little touch right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was a, that that was a fun one. Um, so let me share with you the uh, the torpedo tubes. All right, before you do that, I do want to share uh, a sequence of pictures that you have on your uh, Facebook. And sure. This is this is the lighting of it. This is the short version, right, uh, of what you have. Uh, this will be the final, and this is the kind of uh, LED pad that you have. I'm not sure where you can buy something like this, but that's just that's just three uh, strips. Yeah, right. That's but there are three, yeah, there's three tapes in a row. Uh, yeah, with, yeah. Okay. Little, little density. Yeah, oh. it's a LED tape with three tapes. Okay, so um, there's a working at together, and that's that's the kind of thing that you would be doing. Of course, there's a number of layers for light uh, diffusion, uh, but as right. I was, when we were talking earlier in this picture, there's that hint of uh, sourciness, uh, and I think that fits in with the characterization of Klingons anyway. They're not that thoroughly whatever, uh, and I would think their nacelles would be uh, in some some respects sourcey, you know, but. All right. Hey, I see myself again. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. Okay. All okay. right. The tubes. So the tubes on the two. Okay. Let's see. This is. Oh, okay. Come on. I've had the torpedoes here. Elongated. Finish. There we go. Torpedoes. Torpedoes. Right there. Okay. Okay. There they are. So I knew these were going to be small. Um, this is going. This is. This is actually printed. In translucent white, or, or or clear, I should say, so that when you light these up, um, also include a nice little opening back here, so this really was gonna, this is gonna get real bright. That center um, section is gonna get real bright from the LED lights, um, 
and then everything else just comes on out. So that's a uh, um, simpler design, but when you pull back and look at it with the lights coming through, it, it's pretty effective. Um, let's go. Let's see. Um, hey, oh, here's one you might like. Um, phaser. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Nice. All right. That, that was um, just to kind of let's see. I should have the actual um backdrops in here for this. So let me go ahead and and let's see, let me see if I can find this backdrop. Let's load them on in there. So this was the phaser. If I can find it here, I should be the um now that was right. That was okay. And let's go to um pH for phaser. And right there, phaser backdrop number three should be right there. Oh, you can't find the images? Why can't you find the images, silly thing? Should be right over here. Okay, top, top. Yeah, right there. There they are. Okay. All right. Found it. Okay, so as you can see, let's just go to this view here. Got the wire view of this. So I found the plans for the phaser and just built it. <laughs> on just top of the top of it. Yeah, <laughs> Built it right on top of it. And it's the top view here. And we've got the front view here. Of course, my, my face is probably a little bit small for that one, but that's all right. You guys get the point. Um, this one here, I actually have the actual phaser that I purchased from um, Think Geek. Is that the one phaser? It's... Uh, it's the phaser. It actually works. Yeah, the one company phaser. It's the one. Yeah, I thought it was Think Geek that sells it. Is that is it one? Yeah, they sell they sell the one, uh, but one right. Right, right. So I use that as a reference. That's probably the best reference out there. Yeah, I agree. Stephen, did you just say it works? <clears throat> well, the one the one from Think Geek <laughs> does. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, not work work. You know what? Why well, you think? <laughs> well, I, you know what's really funny is that they could have put a laser in here. Yeah, and with, with all with all of the sound effects, multiple sound effects that it comes with. I mean, the type one. This you don't type, want kids shooting their eyes out. Yeah, well, I, that, that's exactly right. I think that that was the main reasons what I heard, but that would be cool where you can I, actually with with with, with every different um, um, sound effect and phaser effect that uh, a light effect that comes out of here would actually display on the wall from the laser. But that would be that would be fun. Yeah, that's yeah, Simon. Simon, Simon. I think he did that. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Marks would do something like that. Yeah, he did. I want to go back to what uh, Stephen was saying just now about the way he was actually um, building the phaser and that he had on the on the plans. But the other good thing that that uh, you can do uh, with what with the way he's got it there is that because. Uh, you can get plans like that for doing for building objects. Uh, you'll notice that some of them don't have sizes. Right. What's good with what Stephen's uh, done there as well, and what, what the advantage of being able to do this is that you can, in the three D package, make measurements for the real world. So yeah. you can take something that doesn't have a measurement on it, build a model for it, and be able to pull real measurements off the off the CG model. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a tremendous amount of. So you can you can then work out something in real space before you can come to three D printing and work out how big something is going to be. So that you can you can make decisions then as to what needs to be printed and what doesn't need to be printed. What you can uh, what you can purchase from a uh, from you know a hobby store and things like that as opposed to just printing it all. Yeah. You know, because not everything has to be printed, but you can actually pull real real world sizes now. Off an object in 3D space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you, for, for example, if you look at the side view there, there's no actual size to say. No, right. I don't get the size on there to say how big the thing is. Right. But yeah, you can't scale it to any size. But once you once you know, say you you found out that the emitter crystal was I don't know a quarter, a half inch. The second you know that, you know what every single size on that phaser is. 
That's exactly right. You, you you only really need to know the well the basic dimensions of basic. Uh, yeah. Of you, only need, you only you only need one accurate size for right. everything else to be accurate. Right. And the, and that's how and that's how I print these out. Is that um, I have I have a set of caliper uh, that I use, and I just measure the space that the part's going to go into, and just print it out print it out at the proper dimensions, and everything fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all proportional, is what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what's you what's you designing in the three pack? Provided that you follow again, you've got to follow those blueprints uh, and and everything's to scale yeah. size in, in those blueprints. Right. The, you know the one one size one thing, and you only you literally you only need one. You don't need length, breadth, or depth. You all you need is one size. Yeah. You just need one measurement. If it's yeah. if it said there that the was it beam width uh, adjustment ring. So if right. you knew that the circumference or the, the diameter of that was say an inch, you now know the size of every other component on that part. Yeah. It's a really, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a great little tool. It's just back engineering the process. Yep. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's one you might like. Well, this is this is kind of a, a fun one. I was doing, I was playing with this model. Actually, I built this model. Just about done with it. And you all should know this one. Yeah, because we saw you pull up the file on there. <laughs> He's got the whistle, right? <laughs> I like the way you've got it under the plane of the water. Boom. What part of the print? What was that? What part of that would you be thinking to three D print? Well, this one here, to that I, I, and when I, I, I built this way before I got a three D printer. So I wasn't thinking about how to how to 3D print it. Um, this here, I would think two halves. I would I would split it probably right down the middle, and then so that the, the so that the inside fits flat flush with the with the printer bed, um, and then print I, each. Half. I, 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 I think I cut the head off, and then split it in half. And split it in half. Okay, so cut the. So if I, if I cut the head off, then I can build yeah. up the supports, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then, but then, then if you do a left and a right, then with the, the two with the with the rear end. Right. So if I cut it in half here, yeah, then I can print the whole head without um, um, without any supports. And then, well, actually, if I go to the, but if I put this portion down flat on the bed and print upward. I should be able to print that without supports. Yeah, yeah there's not really any overhand. There's, there's uh, the fins. Uh, my, yeah. Mm. yeah, so I should be able to print that straight on up. Interesting. I think I might try that. Um, This here. Print the, the column, right? Yeah. This here I'll probably print as a separate piece. Yeah. 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 yeah print the uh, sale as a separate piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, print that. Print this whole thing as a separate, separate piece. So it. Um, yeah, I always find those were pain in the ass to fit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then of course print the fin separately. So the base of the pin goes flat down on the printer, and it yeah. prints upwards. Yeah, you'd get a lot better print if you print the the uh, the fins on the sail separately. Right. This whole this whole section here. Yeah. yeah, use that. Uh, as they, the, they could be rotated ninety degrees and then printed up once yep. as well. Yep. You well, might need a wee bit of support under the fin uh, because <laughs> attached to attaches to the seal. Right. Uh, isn't isn't flat. Right. You put a little rabbit on it, I would imagine. No, but you can still. It, it, the, the, if you look at the back end of the fin, you can still turn it that way. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. See what I'm saying? They did not know the part where it's attached to the tower. Yes, uh, where the, the the back end of it. Well, see what I would what I do if I was printing those fins, is I would cut it at the sail, and probably print it, uh, just turn it right ninety degrees on where like the the angles here and print ninety degrees pointing up, but I would suspend mm -hmm. it above the board and put uh, 
uh, supports along the bottom of it right. to, to a raft underneath and then print yeah. it facing up. And then you'll get your best finish that way. You yes, know what? I, 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 get, I get lazy about having to, to extract the rafts and, and the supports. So if I could print this without any supports at all, yeah, I mean, you just get a much cleaner, beautiful model. Yeah. Um, well, if you made this, if you made the support a tab that inserts into the tower. Well, the best. Yeah. Well, your bet, your best supports as far as minimum damage to the surface for right. support mm -hmm. is a tree type. Mm -hmm. Tree type yeah. are, are a nat. You have to really have to the learning curve to learn how to use tree. But it gives you your best finish. Really? Yeah. Okay. Rather than linear support. Linear support does a lot of surface damage. But the uh, tree does because the point of contact is only small on the tree type. Gotcha. Okay. I'll explore that possibility. Like I said, this one was built before I, I had a 3D printer, so I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, this one was 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 designed obviously designed in lightweight, but um, lightweight at, at this earlier version of lightweight didn't have the brush capability, so yeah. I had to, I had to export it into ZBrush to pull out this stuff here, and yeah. then bring it back into lightweight again. Because in ZBrush you've got uh, right here in, in lightweight you got the the Go Z button right there. Yeah, so it'll take you into ZBrush and bring it back again. So um, let's do this. Let's share with you another one about, uh, ooh, so I just got started on the Space 1999 Eagle. Um, <laughs> oh, sure. No, I'll say, well, not, not you, but, uh, <laughs> you are. You are now certainly ruining everybody's undergarments. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got started on this. So this is what well, this is where I've gone to so far. So I've got most of the cage done. Um, and I've got all I need to do is the thing with, with, with this particular model, I only need to do one quarter of it. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's it could be cloned. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty symmetrical, right? So, so the the foot's all done. Um, the interior here is just about done, and that's all I need to do. Then all I need to do is just flip this this way and flip this one this way. Well, the, yeah. the, pod, the pods do have subtle differences on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they do. I mean, I mean I, but after I mirror everything, then I can go in and put the little differences on each one. Right, you can go in and edit them. Yeah, it does right. out of the work. Get after all the gear, it's all in there. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, beautiful. this is what I've been doing for years. Um, just little stuff like this. Actually, and this is broken down on layers, also. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the command module for last, <laughs> right? <laughs> but look at all the layers I have in here right now, right? Jeez, God. So command module, landing gear, a side lattice, foot pad. I mean, all broken down <laughs> individual pieces. So if I go to foot pad, boom, there it is. Yeah. So I've been talked into going to Wonderfest. Yay. Yay. So, so one of my clients, I'm actually building i've got a couple of projects he's he's the one i'm doing the enterprise bridge for and i'll show that to you in just a moment um, yeah, the best. yeah uh, but but he's the one that says i'm getting a room come and share it with me and come and meet these guys at comics at the fest mm -hmm. so i said okay <laughs> so that's going to be in june which means i want to prepare a bunch of stuff um for the fest so let's see, landing gear. Let's see, let's do that. There's that's the basic landing gear, kind of give you an idea how I started off with what I started off with. Grebos for landing gear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't that fun? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but this is what I was saying before when uh, when we were talking about you know the difference between scratch building and CG modeling yeah. and why it's very similar. Yeah. And 
this is the thing that people don't realize right. that it's not a case of printing something out and then there you go there's the model but this takes first of all it takes hours to do yeah. these parts yeah but it takes years to learn the skills to be able to, to spend the hours to make those parts yeah thank you Thank but in the scratch building, you're saying it's the same kind of a learning curve, if not steeper. It's, it's, I, I would, I'd say, uh, you know, it's identical. When, when people put down the fact that you've got these CG, uh, you know, it's, it's like when people talk about uh, bad CGI in movies. Yeah. Like, CGI, CGI isn't awful. Bad CGI is awful. Yeah. Good CGI, you don't notice. Nobody complains about good CGI. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't see it. Yeah, so uh, so it's uh, but the, the the amount of time it takes to learn these skills, um, to to be able to make these things, not just not just the learning curve of actually modeling it, but to be able to, to be the time it takes to build. Like what I'm doing, I uh, I'll, sh I'll show you mine now. The um the Galileo that I've I've been doing. Oh, can you see um, that? That's that yeah, pretty yeah. off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if I show you the, uh, that, there you go. Cool. That's, so that's all. Now that's, I'm, I'm looking at that. That's definitely designed for 3D printing from the gig. -gig. Oh, yes. It's, it's <laughs> <all ready to go. laughs> yeah, this is, yes, it is. I've broken everything down, but I've done stuff whereby, like, uh, I put this shelf in here for the, the computer to sit on. Right. Well, the, the shelf in there is actually thicker than it should be. But that's because of the 3D printing process. Because if you print it off really, really thin, there's no support there. It's it's not strong enough. Um, and it's the same with the door there. The door can be extracted. Um, there's the inside of the sled, the back wall. Which and again, I've, I've put these. Uh, if you look on the on the back wall, oh, shit, too far. Um, if you look at the back wall, I've put these cutouts in. Right. And that's because when when you print this out. It won't fit actually fit in this piece here without that cutout in it because of the tolerance on the printer, which is about half a millimeter. Wow! It doesn't so much, but if you if you see that like on the top here, with these little cuts. Right. Now that's literally like the uh, built for a one thirty fifth scale. Mm -hmm. uh, with with that little notch, that takes out the half millimeter tolerance, so that so that when you put the impulse engine on it'll actually fit because when you print it out, otherwise you'll end up uh, sanding out uh, all these parts all the time. So well, there's, the, there's the engine. engineer. Oh yeah. yeah you've, you've got a bit of a but like that. Uh, so there's a front end up oh, front end. Damn you. Stop using that button. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What program is this? This is 3ds max. Oh, yeah, 3ds max. Gotcha. Yeah. So there's the um, if I actually if I click on one of these and I uh, zoom on it, <clears throat> I can actually orbit just around that. So um, you can see where I've put the cutouts in for the uh, the um, wings, yeah. where the wings actually fit right. into the into that. No, these have had to be repositioned because uh, if you because of the angle of these wings. The supports right if you just cut out where they were supposed to connect it won't fit because uh it's wider at this point here which would actually sink into the nacelle than it is here so you have to make it wide enough so it goes into the actual sink in point right right I have to make it parallel to the ground well you've got you've got to make it so that like for example if, if you um i'm gonna put it right so let's look at these from side on uh, they're, they're wider here and here than they are at, at these corner points here. See what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it, it, it tapers up, it, it tapers wider. So if you cut these holes so they're only fitted here, right. these would never slot in. Right. You have, you have to reposition these holes so they actually slot into the depth that you need to slot into. Right. Basically, you have to just resize the holes just slightly. Yeah. Yeah, just like if you've got to come because if you print that, if you were to print that out with this, just cut it to the the width of the, the actual leg, then it would never fit. You've got to account for the the actual width of the hole from here 
to cure. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's yeah, because those that fins, sense? those fins are yeah. a polygon, not a not a parallel. Yeah, game. because because they're not if they were square, they would just slot straight in. But because they're yeah. diagonal, the the yeah. hole has to be wide enough for but this part just, to fit inside. Couldn't you just add um, a tab to the bottom of those that would fit slot straight down? You could, yeah, you could put a vertical slot in. But the, the reason why I've, I've just altered it like that is because it'll actually slot in like that, but it's at an, it's um, they're not straight. Nothing about this model is straight. Right. So, um, but the reason why I've done that, you can see from the front there, they sit like this. It's easier to print. You don't have to, you can probably yeah. print that straight. If off. I just come for the spacing of the hole, that'll actually just slot the click straight into place. So I was just hired to build the um, the 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 transport pod, the little square, the square box looking transport pod that 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 that, that goes outside the starship inspecting it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kirk is on. So I was just hired to build that, but a big one, but with the interior and everything intact. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So this this is actually no no peaking ideas for me here uh -huh. yeah well i've actually got the the interior for this as well um but I've, 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 what i've what i tend to do is normally when i've completed something and i've, I've worked out uh you know for example uh these nacelle caps here right normally what i would do is i would go right then so i can now if i just uh hide out one of these if i say right there oh, right there's the nacelle caps i can i can file and export these uh, to put it somewhere, uh, to put it uh, into a into a file. Once those are exported, I can actually just then say, right, well, uh, I'll hide those now. I've, those are done, and then I'll just keep going through the file right. until nothing's. So if I if I was to go to say, um, let's do a new. I noticed the doors on the side of the Galileo craft. Yes. Aren't you going to make that so that they open up? They are, well, it's difficult on the Galileo because the, the the doors on the Galileo actually, these ones actually go inside the ship first and then slide open. Okay. Yeah, they sink in and slide open, yeah. Yeah, they, they sink in, they go in, inside the body of the ship and then slide open. Yeah, so to, to make these so that they're openable, yeah, what I would do is just put a, a magnetic tab on them. I just have, you can see where I've done the doors in double so that. Uh, nice. There's some depth. Well, you've got the interior and the exterior, plus you can put a piece of uh, clear in the window then, in the in-between, so you actually got glass in there. Right. Hmm. So you've got the inside and the outside, but you can actually, I haven't actually pulled this off the model uh, for this one. I, they, they scribed in, but I haven't, I haven't pulled them off, and that's because I've I done a test print of that section uh, just to see how it would work, and uh, it works fine. Um, but yeah, to have it as an openable door, you can see from the inside there how it's divided up. Right. Um, oh, so, so so you bullioned out the windows for the front of the front of cat for the front of the shuttle craft. Shuttle, I can't talk about shuttle craft. Uh, for the for the front windows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the front section is all separate anyway. Uh, if I, if I were to show you the model, ah. I'll show you the elements. Uh, there's the the front. Yep. Uh, the roof. Gotcha. Yeah, I think the oh. tendency in 3D would be is to, there, there's a temptation to make everything all one one big piece. Yeah. And it's right. still, I think it's still much more effective to make it in, in smaller pieces and do some old fashioned model building when you're done. Yeah. So uh, you can see like uh, you know how how, how is, this has come together because the, there's the front window there. And basically, once I've got the, the, the right size for the front window, um, again, to do the roof, then the roof is a separate piece. But these are all separate elements that have been, these are now all welded together uh, in this uh, portion. And the reason why I did that was because I could extract the, uh, if I take the engine here, oh, because the engine's in uh, two parts as well. If I take the engine frame, um, I can put the engine frame into this area here. Um, oh, to come up a bit. There we go. Now this is reversed, but uh, it still it uh, lines up with the roof no problem at all. 
So uh, it just makes things easier. And again, you're working on what needs to be done for not just 3D printing, but putting it back together once it's been printed. You know, so uh, when when this uh, when once this is off, printed off, I can just glue this onto the back end of the right. shuttle, it'll, and it'll be a seamless join all the way up. So plus right. the other thing as well, like with the Galilee, you've got a flat roof on the front. Right. Well, just curved the hell in the back, so you've got a it's a it's a it's a really difficult shape. Right. Um, to go to go from flat to curved is. Uh, I remember doing it for real. <laughs> and Lou knows because he's got it. Yes. Not a, not a, um, not yeah. Not a, not a, not a thing. Darling. Hello. So, you also did interior for the uh, shuttle. And I know you're working on 3D printing, but you know, I mean, your skills as just a scratch builder are uh, just amazing, mate. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, but, but again, it's, it's the same sort of process. It's, it's not really that different a process. Um, what am I, what's happening here? Well, I don't think it's a different process or approach. I think it's just the, um, it's just the medium you're working in. I mean, yeah, but that's, I mean, like people shun the sort of the CG medium, you know, particularly people from the model building world, you know, scratch builders, model builders, rivet counters. They they will um, hmm. they will sort of berate or look down upon the three D printing community and the three D printing world for what they're doing, you know, because they, right. they tend to look at it as a shortcut in model building, and it's not it's not a shortcut at all. It takes yeah. a shortcut right. that takes it's actually not. longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. The, the bonuses are that you you can get a computer accurate. That's yeah. the bonus to it is that that you don't have to spend so much time with a, a ruler or calipers and things and, and doing it like with you know, but you can actually get it pinpoint accurate down to the hundredths of a millimeter. Right. You know, and and you know, the, at the end of the day, you end up with something that's better quality. And how can how can you complain about better quality? That's right. It's kind. It's kind of um. It's. It, I mean, 3D printing is not going to replace the practical industry. No, uh, no. I mean, because we're limited by size, <laughs> for one. So, but not only that, but he's, he's absolutely right. You have to have, um, um, it's that way. So you have to almost be have to be like a CG artist to really be the most effective with 3D printing. Yeah. Um, and you have to have some practical skills along with digital skills to marry the two industries. Yeah. Because once you put it together, you, then there's other other things you need to do with it. You gotta you gotta paint it and prime it, and then you may you have to decal it. I mean, this you gotta have yeah. both. Should it's, I? It's the start of the process, is not the end. Right. It's just another tool. It, yeah, but again, yeah, but it is it is just the start of the process. You know, it's not. Uh, it, you can get three D printers out there with multiple colored extruder heads on it, and you yeah. can print it off in, in in color if you like. But it's yeah. still. That doesn't give you the final finish. You right. know what? I, I just got a bunch of um, um, photos here from Gene Davis. Can I share those real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. Yep. All right. So then here, I think these are my warp nacelle end caps that he's using. Let's see. What is this here? Let me just click on this. Um, There we go. So there, there's my grills. So, no, oh, come on. Black. Okay, so there's the grill. So I designed the grills for this, um, and this was designed so the grills go from uh, from behind, and and flush uh, with the, with the side of this nacelle uh, detail. There's that um, that floating end cap that lights up. Mm -hmm. um, there. Um, let me go. Let's see if I can kind of just do this here. That's something different. That's something different. Let's go back and let's go get. Uh, oh boy. This one. <laughs> I'm a po boy too. There we go. There's the side. You can see the lights from from behind. Uh, well, it's not a very. His photos are always fuzzy. <laughs> so, cell phone uh, picture. Yeah, that's right. So the lights <laughs> come from behind on this one. Um, let's do. Let's see what this one is. So this is where I provided the holes to put the LEDs through for that one. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. 
um, this is Steve Smith. Oh, this is from Steve Smith. Okay, Gene Davis sent these from Steve Smith. Steve Smith was my first client for doing these. Yeah, and those are the grills. Thanks, Gene, for sending these. Um, and and of course, this was designed. These were designed for Steve Smith. So as you can see, Steve Smith model, uh, Smith model Industries. Um, but yeah, I had to. I just got. I just saw this 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 um, note from from Gene. Um, all right, I think we're. Let's see. I think we're done looking at the ego, right? Kind yeah. of, sort of. All right, let's go look at another one. Let's just get rid of these models here. Yeah, one more. <laughs> One more? One oh, more. One more? Okay. Yeah, well, we got we to gotta wrap it up, but one more. All right, you've got it. All right, let's go get it. Let's see. Let's see. What can I show you? Well, I suppose we can just go ahead. Oh, remember the, the bridge, the Enterprise bridge, the one that we were looking at earlier? Um, I've got both the full Enterprise and the Enterprise bridge. Book cover ship. Okay, this will go to Enterprise bridge. Okay, there she is. All right, let's, let's break down these layers here real quick. Um, let's see, bottom half. Let's. Yeah, uh, you know, you're, yeah, I, I don't know if you know this or not, Steve, Stephen. You're going to be coming back sometime later. And you <laughs> no <problem>. you can't <laughs> just, as they say, blow your load in one, one sitting. Exactly. Don't worry. I, I totally understand. <laughs> All right, so. Um, there is, so this, I designed this to be printed in one piece without supports. Uh, -huh. um, I, I try to design most of this stuff so I don't have any need of support so I can just yeah. take it off the press and it's done. Um, this was designed according to the client's specifications. So I didn't have a whole lot of input into this in terms of, except for some of these little areas up here. But um, he wanted he wanted to be. I wanted to add more detail to it, but he wanted it smooth, no detail. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is the um, the ring that we're gonna. It's gonna be flush with the saucer section, and then all the windows and specific all the windows, the ports were designed in location exactly to his specifications. Um, this one here was designed so that he can put the LED landing lights or the or just the running lights, and one on each side. Right. So LED comes off through the top, and if we go to the bottom, it's a bigger hole for the wires. Right. So just something small enough to, to fit flush with the LED, and then a little wider opening, and all this is going to be open so that he can put additional lights inside and windows for the windows, of course. Um, then we've got um, the yeah. center. Dome. What you showed right there is I, I wish the major manufacturers would be more aware of how big an LED is. Uh, right. or, or it gives some uh, indication where to place an LED, uh, but where you're, you're doing it, you're just doing it to not just a client specification, but you understand that something's got to go in there is my point. Right, exactly. Well, I'm trying to design it in such a way that it makes it really easy for you guys so that you don't have to go drilling holes into it. I, I It's just easier for me to design the holes than yes. it is for you guys to drill the holes. That's right. And uh, and I think that's what, what, what makes some of these models attractive to um, a lot of people who purchase them because they're um, they're like, they're done. They're all they're all pretty much done. It's all the details there, the, the openings are there. Right. Um, so yeah, so everything's at, a, at an angle where I, it just prints Print from the bottom on on up. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the um the, the bridge, not the bridge, but the, the sensor dome. At All least right. you're to be centered, unlike anything that I could do. I could never get a a, a, a hole drilled in the same place twice in a row. Yeah. <laughs> well, after you drill it the first time, when do you need to drill it again? No, I'm thinking like a series of holes. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you you just have the modeling now. Mm -hmm. All right, so this the sensor dome. Um, I, I designed for thick because this is going to be clear. So this uh -huh. is going to be clear. So I gave it a little thickness, and um, and then I think uh, let me kind of go see what show everything. And then the bottom dome. This one. Let me see if I can uh, bottom bottom final uh -huh. there. 
with the rings and he wanted the rings in here so yeah is he gonna have that bridge open then what was that is he having that bridge open then well no this 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 bridge this bridge here um this it's, is the bottom part from underneath this from underneath right. so this like this underneath Donatory sensor doom that's a yeah. sensor doom. right so basically um this just fits flush on your model and it, 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 all you need to do is put some glue around the edges and it'll fit right flush on the model. That's with, with the kit comes with that other 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 thing that's kind of squarish rectangular with mm -hmm. the lights jetting from 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 all four sides. Oh, well, yeah. this fits right onto the model. Like just glue it on and you're done. It totally covers that part all together. Yeah, it, it totally covers that part. Cool. I just uh, I've got the, I've got the dome. I can, I can show it to you if you want. Yeah, but, uh, uh, somebody and somebody just uh, said something. Gearhead Workshop said uh, that one thing uh, about that design of your uh, uh, primary decks, the upper decks, uh, reducing the wall thickness where the rear lounge window frame is might be nice feature for adding in window glass slash clear styrene. Right. So basically, uh, uh, yeah, like I think he wanted. I think the the client probably wanted the deeper window sills, though. Yeah, he did. He did want it deeper because he wanted the. You look right here in the um the the ports here. Right. Um, the dock he, port, yeah. Right. He wanted so that the doors were completely vertical with that slant. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there had to be some thickness in there, but but yeah. It's just I, that you got you got to remember as well. It looks, uh, you know, massive on this screen here because this is right. zoomed in. But actually, you're dealing with millimeters, so right. yeah. it, it it it's always it's deceptive when you're working on it in 3D as opposed to 3D printing. Um, it, it, once you print yeah. it off, you realize how small, like those those gaps there are probably yeah. um, two mil deep. Yeah, but I think yeah. I think, I think yeah. what you're yeah. saying is the uh, the commenter was wanting to put the windows on the VIP lounge to have the same plane as the outer shell mm. and not have deep window sills like. Yeah, yeah. But again, you, that's, you, that's you, the aesthetic you, choice the client probably asked for. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and he's right. The, um, the, the, this is like two mil. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's thin. It looks thick because it's zoomed in. Yeah. But when you print it out, it's 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 pretty thin in there, um, but yeah, I, mean, I can like experiment with experiment with that as well. So I I I, mean, I had to add in a little extra space if, if for the grill. Acetate for a window or something like that. That's just going to bend and make form uh, a shape into it. And most right. people use uh, opaque uh, window openings for lighting, anyhow, for diffusion. Right. Um, but yeah, when you're talking about the scale of what we're looking at, when it's actually printed, it's 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 just going to be a very thin piece of resin or or print right. material. So visually, you're not going to really see much of a difference. No, you're not going to perceive a big issue. So it's um, um, so yeah, I mean, it can, I mean, this can go forever. I mean, <laughs> in terms of what you design and. I mean, and now I think the fun thing about it is, and sometimes it's frustrating, is trying to get exactly what the client wants. Now, because of my CG background, um, you know, of, of working with this stuff for a long time, um, it's, and I guess I should probably put this out there for those who want to get into 3D printing. Your ability to pay attention to detail is critical. Oh, yeah. It's critical. It's, 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 it's not like you're going to have an opportunity to do what you want to do all the time. You got to do what works and you got to do what, what makes the client happy. Um, so learning to listen and implement is really critical. Yeah. Um, so, so, and I've found the, the more you listen, it's like so far, most of my clients says, will look at my, my original design or, or the, my first draft and they'll go, wow, that's like 95, 95% of the, of the way there. That's mm -hmm. what you want to hear. Yeah. All right. It's, uh, it's, it's just sharpening our customer service uh, skills is what it is. Right. Uh, right. You're yeah. talking about when it comes to the business thereof. That, that is something that could be talked about uh, at a later date as to how everything is fit together from uh, getting these things together and getting uh, 
you know, uh, making those uh, adjustments and, and, and what do you call it? Client, no. client requests. Now I know you told me one more, but I figured here's one. I just wanted to share. That was a problem. Oh, man, he's going on and on. Okay, this, good. I, this one, I, that, that, that was a problem. Um, let's see. Well, you said under, you have it under Ross. What else? I know it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what I, the best. I think this I, is I kid, Ross. I kid. I kid. <laughs> good, good. Actually, oh, I know what it is. I'm sorry. Let me go to ZBrush real quick. It's in ZBrush. I'm going to go grab it. Here it is right here. I'm going to pull that up. All right. This one was a problem because there were all types of subtle curves. I couldn't do it all in Lightwave. It had to be done in ZBrush. So I'm, ZBrush is coming up. I'm going to show that to you real fast. Well, sure. I'd like to review what our live chat people are talking about. Uh, Absolutely. Get done, okay. Absolutely. I think it's basically they're talking amongst each other, just overwhelmed with what you're uh, talking about. Just like deer in headlight, they just can't stop looking at the screen. Because <laughs> I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm fascinated by this stuff, too. All right. I've got it here. So let me just get the, get everything on over here. Oh my, look at this. Okay, so this was a problem. I, know, <laughs> I finally got it, but it, it was a problem. <laughs> All right, so basically, let's see. Maybe, I think it's one of these later versions here. Let me just, um, this is the open file. Yeah, maybe I'll go with this one. There. Okay. Oh, okay. This was a problem because there were so many little subtle angles in here. So many little subtle angles. And I first got the project. Oh, this would be easy. <laughs> you know, I, should be, I, should be, I should be able to do this in a couple hours. Yeah, right. And it was these subtle little angles. It's kind of like you needed a brush. You needed something like this to come in here and sculpt it, right? Right. And I'm messing it up right now, but you got to get to see the point. Um, but you needed to sculpt this thing. Um, it was a challenge. So I'm going to go to Lightbox again. Let me go get one of these over here. Here, let's go to just make a new documents faster. Um, let's see. Is this one of the... Yeah, this is one of the last ones. Okay, so I'm in ZBrush now. Okay, so and I and this will be hollowed out mm -hmm. um, because electronics are going to go inside. Uh, I got to build the base for it. Um, so I'm in here playing with these tools. Oh, let's go over here. Let's go to my polish tool. Um, there's a planer. I suppose I can play with planer, but I should have an H polish in here. So um, here we go. That's it there. So I'm in here playing with these tools. <coughs> I brush a little higher. So to get a nice, a nice clean surface. So to get to get these edges right, right? Just kind of flatten them out. So this took forever. I mean, it it. Not really forever, but it, it was just a little bit of a challenge. More than Making, a couple hours, like you said. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I thought this was going to be like really fast, and it ended up being these super subtle little details. Well, I finally got to the point where the client says, that's it. And I told him, I said, you know, it would have been a lot easier. I said, most of my clients, I said, most people I do this for were sending me the actual 3D object to pull from. He goes, oh, really? I said, I've got it here. You want me to send it to you? <laughs> it's like that would be nice <laughs> so when he sent it to me um it was it, 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 it was not like what i designed because i never had it in hand so then now i've got something accurate to work with and, uh, and I'm, I'm polishing this surface out as as we as as i'm talking here but uh to get a, 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 a more of a, a mirror like look plus a harder edge so um so this one was 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 a uh was a challenge. so what this was going to be the base this 
it's going to be the base for the one three fifty scale enterprise. And um, and if you let's see if I remember correctly, the white like box, the JMT enterprise. Yeah, yeah, and if you can, yeah, exactly. So if I just open up one of these, I'm um, so this is an this is an old one, but uh, you can see that's the base that he sent me. That's the picture of the base that he sent me. Mm. Uh, So he didn't actually send me the actual piece. He sent me the grayscale of, of, of photographs that he took. Well, the problem is that these little subtle curves weren't really showing mm -hmm. in the photos, and I had to interpret it. So, so he, needed, he needed to send you a top, a, a side, and a front. Well, he did. You. But he did. But it was still subtleties in there that you didn't see. When he actually sent me the actual model mm -hmm. that he just basically made from plaster, then I can see and touch and feel where things go. Now I can design it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. There's my skill. <laughs> so just just, a, just an, as an example of, uh, you know, some of the problems of doing 3D printing. I've got a, the image of the fifth Doctor's TARDIS console that I've been working on for ages. And I mean ages. I've been working on this thing for a good two, three years. Um, so this, there's the console with every single button, switch, and dial. Well, can we see your screen? Uh, yeah, you should be able to see it. Screen. Click onto his screen on your screen. Uh, there well. you go. All right. Okay. Let me see that again. Oh, so yeah. Right. So I see. The, yeah. The fifth Doctor's TARDIS console. Right. So there's, there's all, uh, every button. And it's different all the way around. Mm -hmm. On every every single side is different. Right. Um, but there's there's all the levers, all the switches, everything, right? That's a. Uh, then you got all the all the framework as well, which is all separate. You got you know things like, for example, the outer trim and stuff like that. These are all separate pieces. But the one of the problems of of three D printing something like this. Uh, if I stop sharing this, if you look at the the buttons here. This is where sometimes, you know, sometimes it's better to 3D print something and you've got to take into account uh, size, shape and scale. So if I stop 3D, uh, stop sharing that, this is one of the the tops that was wow. uh, 3D printed. And it looks fairly much okay. Uh, I've got to print the outer frame separately. So the, right. the frame is a separate piece. Right. More than a separate piece. But this is this is whereby you learn sort of um, the limitations of things. Like if you take a look at the the buttons there, right? It, so you can see that it's sort of a pretty much three uh, D printing those is kind of a bit of a waste of time because it can't really print all of them individually. Is this what they the impression mean? there of of them? It's more of a mash. See it, right? Right, I can see. It. Is this with an SLA printer? This is a, a PLA uh, printer. PLA printer. Okay. A, a point zero, was it point zero six millimeter point zero six? Well, that's a that's a large nozzle for that. Oh, it's no point point zero point zero six. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of point six. I'm thinking of point six. So yeah, point, no, no, no. Point, point, point zero six is. Uh, but yeah, so even with even with that, you can see sort of where. If you don't make things extruded a little more, yeah. So you can you can barely see the switches on that yeah. surface there. Really nice. So, but they should be extruded a little more. You know, but an extra, you know, yeah, four exactly. millimeter. Yeah. That's you're, exactly saying, right. you're saying to exaggerate it on your uh, drawing. Right. Print yeah, it. you have to exaggerate it because, like, again, if if I was to print this off at say a one six scale, which would be you know three times the size, right. It's no problem, right. okay. but because it's right. this small, you can barely see these things because they need to be a bit more pronounced. That's yeah. exactly correct. That's exactly. See? Correct. And the ones that aren't, when you get into these smaller areas, they just become this sort of blob. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is where you do test prints. Also, uh, I printed it a solid instead of. Uh, <laughs> no. So no how, 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 long 
So how long did it take? 12 hours, uh, 12 and a half hours this took. That that's pretty fast. What was your it's not, it's not bad, but it's 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 not that big either. You know, it's 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 kind of small. So yeah, but, 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 twelve and a half hour, half hours for a solid uh, solid print. Right, but with a um, six nozzle, I mean that should have been longer than that. Yeah, no, it was it, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Um, but again, I again I didn't print it with everything on it. Like I said, all the all the grills and everything were printed separately. Wow. Yeah. You know, so they they fit on top of the monitor. All the monitors are printed separately, so it all fits on like that. If it, it all comes together nice, but again, if I'm good, if I'm gonna do another version of this, why I've been working on it for so long in 3ds is that um, this needs to be hollow. Um, all these parts need to be exaggerated a little bit more, and it needs to be printed off at a bigger scale, just so you get this. Because there's things that you can't really, like you can't really see the sort of the shape. I suppose you can on camera. You can't in real life, though. See the shape <laughs> of that diamond there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in in real life, um, it's because it's countersunk right into the into the console. You can't really see the shape of it. It just looks like a shapeless blob. But so, on camera, it's actually showing up. <laughs> so, 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 why did you choose to print it solid as opposed to just infill? Um, it was a, it was a mistake. Um, <laughs> it was a, it was a mistake because um, basically I hadn't uh, I was working out how best to attach the top and the bottom together. Right. And if you look on the side there, you'll see I've actually put a recessed lip. Right. For it to actually sit inside the, the bottom. Right. But the the problem is that when I printed the bottom, I printed the bottom a solid as well. Oh no. <laughs> exactly. So this would have to be cut off with a saw. Uh, um, so that's why this is a test print, and uh, we're doing another. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but I mean, these are the sort of problems that you just they, they never get addressed when people talk about three D printing and stuff like that. These are the sort of things. Like I said, those, making those buttons more pronounced mm -hmm. on something at this scale. Um, I'm more exaggerated because, like, even even like with these ones here, you know, right. you can barely see the top of the switch because yeah. it, because it's one of those uh, L-shaped switches, those rocket switch. You, because it's not that pronounced, you can barely see the top of it. You can't see it, but it's it's so subtle. Whereas if you exaggerate it a little bit more, and it's the same with these ones over here, you know, but. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I've got to back engineer the whole thing again now, just for, for lighting purposes. So that needs to be redone again. So right. yeah, there nice. are. It's, 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 it's working. This is this is why we do tests. <laughs> this is great. Now, well, what do you, now, now what now? Is that what you do professionally? No, I do it for fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I torture myself for fun. <laughs> All right, uh, you know what? I, uh, uh, Stephen, if you can go top of your screen and click on to the word stop. Stop, all right. So then... Um, uh, somewhere. Uh, there you are. Hey. There okay. you are. All right. I just want to okay. go over some of the things that were being said. Uh, there was a couple of uh, three guys that actually were talking back and forth about... I do think they actually, some of them even are professionals that are doing this and they're probably going to be clients or will be clients soon if they're not already of yours. Uh, but there's a lot of things that were discussed here. And uh, boy, you were just going on a good, uh, I didn't want to interrupt with this, but they were talking about the different versions of the TOS, uh, like the phase two right. TOS. Uh, and they're talking about, uh, Katingas and the Proteus and and so on. And before we came on the air, uh, we Jim and I were running on YouTube the uh, the opening to uh, Flash Gordon because we were bored. And I think <laughs> part of part of everything is like uh, uh, scale modelers get bored with stuff. And uh, and what I was just saying earlier, come on, work with me here. Uh, of course, it doesn't want to. My Google Hangout doesn't want to respond. <laughs> I just might have to pass out and come back in. 
Uh, gosh, I don't like technology when it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, yep, everything is freezing up. Not responding, not responding. Uh, I'm a big doo-doo. Sometimes that happens with me. Have you ever considered doing this on on Twitch? Yeah, just talk uh, talk among yourselves. I'll, I'll get this fixed. I, I can hear you fine. Isn't so. Jack bad at his job? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't get paid, so I'm okay and he's that. worth every penny. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> worth every penny. <laughs> That's a compliment. <laughs> I've got something to tell you. You know, I've been you know really <laughs> Star Trek things and enterprise and stuff, and Jack's always moaning that I don't move away out of my comfort zone. Well, I've decided to move out of my comfort zone, and guess what I got? Hello, enterprise. No, I got World War One bag now. For a piece, I got one of these. Ah, ooh! All right. So I've jumped from one end of the scale to the other. <laughs> Not your airplane? Are you going to light it? Light it? I've never built one. Never mind light one. <laughs> ah, no, don't be childish, Jamie. But tell you what, that thing is huge. Well, with the name on the box as well, you should play a Ken Gorgon song. Yeah, that, that one actually comes with all the um, different schemes. And it also comes with the photo edge, and it also comes with resin parts. Nice. Yeah, it's the, it's the F-14 Tomcat. And it's called Danger Zone because when you open the box, there's a boxing glove on a spring that comes out and punches you in the face. <laughs> actually, the detail on this is quite... It, it's, I was quite amazed. Um, let me show you a piece. There we go. Got it. It's like, uh, I guess my uh, memory got uh, jammed up. But this is uh, what are you doing there, Jamie? Oh, yeah. He's showing us a model piece. Go ahead. Looks like. Oh, yeah, I'm saying you, you, you would vanish, but. Um, Flash Gordon. Uh, always uh, moaning, I don't move at my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm not surprised I was going to. I'm sorry you've gone. I decided to show them. I've got one of these. Ooh. Oh, that's that's danger. F14, F16, something like that. F14. You want it for eight, Scott? No, 15. F15. 14. 14. Okay. There's the first one. And one of the ones uh, yeah. back, the others doesn't. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I wanted to, just wanted to say that, uh, you know, uh, we're going to try to get, uh, we want you to do something like this there. Uh, but the lighting effects will be on another show. I don't expect Stephen to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy just for a match to it. Well, but uh, the Ajax would be uh, something that is a small but a virulent uh, fan base for uh, Flash Gordon. But uh, we were just saying we were just bored, and if you get bored in in the hobby, it's your fault because, <laughs> as, you, as you prove, Stephen, it's uh, most definitely something you can expand on in different ways. Now, if you want to uh, check out uh, Stephen, uh, let's see, uh, he has a Facebook page, Stephen Burns, and this is what it looks like. That's for a lot of pictures I was pulling off of this earlier in the show. And he also has a YouTube channel. And this is what really gets me. You got tw over 1,200 subscribers, and you got only like a handful of videos. What's that about? I'm still working on them. I've got <laughs> more videos. I just haven't put them up there. But but no, no, this, no, I've got, I've got a lot of videos. I've got over, I've got a, oh, a couple hundred. Yeah. So if you click on the video link, yeah, click on the video link. It should give you the whole book. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> okay. So I do I do Twitch broadcasts every week, and the broadcasts are three hours long. So I yeah. usually and put when do you do them? Um, well, no, that's a good question. Um, you, I don't have a particular set day um, because I've been working a lot on these little projects here. But I'm, I'm thinking about turning these little work projects into Twitch broadcasts. 
so I can do them at least you know two two or three days a week right now. I'm not teaching as much this 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 half of the semester, so I have a little bit more time for the broadcast. So um, just um, go to my Twitch page, which is the uh, um, the the, the Twitch dash TV forward slash Chrome Illusion. Um, yeah, should I put it? I'll put it, I'll put it into the yeah. Little, do that if you could. Out. So I'm going to do it right now. Put it in the chat box. Go www dot um, twitch dot on a minute. Let me get the dot in here right. Dot TV forward slash Chrome Illusion. And I'm also going to put in the chat box. Um, go ahead and click on that. You should, it should take you there. I'm gonna put the, yep. my, the web box, and the chat box on my web page. It is, and let's see, where are you here? No, it's not showing up. Oh. Oh. Why the hell? Can you flash Gordon some? <laughs> there we go. Share. Okay. Cool. You. All right. So that's my Twitch page. So follow me. So that every time I go on my my page uh, and and do a broadcast, you're automatically notified. Follow. Oh, uh, we gotta put a username in there. I gotta sign up for Twitch. Yeah, just sign up for Twitch now. Just just a little little word uh, a word here. Um, if you are an Amazon Prime member, Twitch is the full version of Twitch is free. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So sign sign up for Twitch. Go on there, and and the broadcasts are normally three hours long, and and if you and on the video page, you can actually if you click on videos. Mm -hmm. We have additional videos up here at the top. Uh, so so oh, click on, oh, am I doing this? Okay, sorry. Yeah, you're doing this. There you go. There are my videos. You can go watch those. Uh, that's a lot of three-hour segments there. Yeah, it's a whole lot. Now, now I was one of Adobe's um, um, presenters on Twitch on the Adobe Twitch channel. Uh, we, I, I, we, no, we can hear that in the background, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> me me messing up our broadcast with flat. <laughs> oh, DM me. Okay. Uh, you know, you're encouraging me to get my uh, Amazon uh, Prime back. Right. So then also go to my webpage, chromeillusion.com. Chrome Illusion? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I gave you a link. I gave you a link. It's in the chat box. Oh, okay. it's the beauty. Yeah, go, go to the chat box I gave you. It's in there already. There it is. I'm going to give you one more link, and it's going to be a Behance link. Is that Twitch like my, me reader? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't have this. To, to, Twitch is just like a video streaming service, but it's normally for games. Uh, uh, normally, I gotta move it off that uh, hangout screen. I think I, I think I'm, I'm learning here. It, it has the benefit of not being YouTube. <laughs> there we go. Share. Right. Okay. So if you go to my books and DVDs, just real quick, um, click on and then you can see click on the books, and then that's the books I've written. Oh, nice! And you can get those in book and 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 Bookstar or Barnes and Noble or on Amazon. Uh, if you click on the DVDs, these are all like five-hour DVDs, I think it is. All right, uh, Photoshop Cafe is my publisher. Okay. If you click on Gallery Six, um, and then click on one of the images to the left. You get to see some of the artwork that I do. Now, this is a lot of this is done in Photoshop. Um, and if you click on, of course, you know, if you click on tutorials, tutorials. Where, um, oh, there you are. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, there, no YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, tutorials on Photoshop techniques. If you go to my YouTube channel, you're getting a lot more, a heck of a lot more. Uh -huh. yeah. This is just some select ones I use for my my uh, my my classes that I teach. Um, so if my, for your members, for people watching, if you go back to home, please. Um, that join our mail list, mail list, sign that up, sign up for that, so you're notified about um, what I'm doing and where I am and all that stuff. 
and uh, and the next broadcast I'll be doing and so forth. Mm -hmm. I'll usually post it to the community there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so so I gave you a Behance link. Check that out. Could click on that one. I like that little still you got there. You're thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Behance. Oh, I, I you put his finger in his and he keeps missing. <laughs> So, all right. So, Behance is Facebook for um, Facebook for artists, and um, and if you click on that Starship, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. So, those are some of the um, um, presentations I did on 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 video on on the on Twitch. The results of it. You can click on. This reminds me of that guy from the '30s and '40s. Oh shoot! I, I there was a uh, documentary but, done on him, and it was what's that? Chesley Bonestell. Yep, Bonestell. Right. This is um this is a combination of 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 two D and three D blended together. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so, so, this is a digital mapping. What? Uh, let's so see. go. So click on the outside anywhere, and this it should be a three D one. That's three D. That this. These here are 3D stuff. So this is all 3D. Um, the Starship Enterprise is all was all done in lightweight. And if you scroll down, scroll down, you get to see kind of a workflow, texturing, all that stuff. Well, wow, here in Starship Pegasus. Then three, Photoshop has a 3D engine built into it. So this is in Photoshop right now. If you scroll down more, this, this now, that's Photoshop, Lightwave, and then I think it goes back to Photoshop again. That's Photoshop again, um, texturing in Photoshop. Wow, uh, this is something Lou does. <laughs> <laughs> So the light, the lightsaber one there to the far right that you just passed, that's all that this was part of a, a, a Twitch broadcast I did. This is all light Photoshop. Everything was done 100% in Photoshop, 3D. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, if you go to, let's see, go down. These are light wave, um, uh, something I did for a client, a shoe. That was light wave. Nice. This is for a client done done for a client. That was an animation done for a client. But this is some of the stills. This phaser was all done in light in Photoshop. Surprisingly. Um, there is one on there. Oh damn, I lost my my, my train of thought. Um let's did uh, yeah, this is this is there is one, oh gosh, it's, um, click on the one with that, that Starship Enterprise in the, in the asteroid. That's a combination of 2D and 3D. So if you scroll down, that's two, that's a 3D image in 2D world. Mm. This, um, this here is the same thing. All, all the buildings were created in a 2D world from scratch, and then the, the model was built the flying model was built in Lightwave and brought into the scene. Interesting. Um, if you keep going down, this was done in Poser, the character, and then brought into Photoshop. Remember, remember, Photoshop does 3D now. So if you scroll down some more, um, this was <laughs> all built in Photoshop here. Emerald um, City, it looks like. It looks like what? Emerald City. Huh. Was Almost, <laughs> but mine is more fun. Yeah, it is. It's much more graphic and uh, much more uh, fantasy. -like. There's, no, there's no yellow brick road to be following. You got to figure well, out. You, know, you can put that in. Yeah. Put the fields in. You know. That's right. Let's go down more. This was done um, in Photoshop with. This is 3D, half 3D, and and half um, um, digital painting. Wow, you're good. And this is, like I mentioned earlier, part 3D, part uh, digital painting. 
and the Starship Enterprise was created in Lightwave. Um, and then I brought it into Photoshop, and and then the Meteor was created in Photoshop 3D. Oh, uh, come on, Stephen, be straight with me. That's a picture of one of Simon Mark's ships uh, with his lasers in it. <laughs> oh, something like that. Yeah, it, it, may the, it may have been the inspiration, but uh, and this is, and, and 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 the depth here isn't completely correct. I got to correct the depth for the lasers. So it's too it's too bright going for, back toward the ship and too large. So I've mm -hmm. got to correct for that. Um, but everything else, yeah, all done in layers in Photoshop. So um, if you click to the right, see see with the book there, it oh. says Photoshop. Uh, That's I'm my look back. Uh, I'm just click anywhere outside those grids. All right. So if you go down, there it is. He's 3D Photoshop for the Creative Professional. Yep. That's my latest book. And everything here is done in Photoshop. The cover, 3D, all 3D stuff is done in Photoshop. Go down. Just scroll down. That's the cover, all done in Photoshop. Jeez. And go down some more. This is all, 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 all um, modeled, textured, and rendered in Photoshop. Wow. Everything here. Same wow. thing here. Mm -hmm. So if you have Photoshop and didn't know it does 3D, guess what? Photoshop has a built-in slicer. Mm. So you can print directly from inside of Photoshop to your 3D printer. So this is all 3D, all done custom in Photoshop. The can wine, you 3D print wine too? Yep, the wine and the wine glass is 3D, the wine glass is 3D, and the wine bottle is 3D. Oh, you're putting out some vineyards out of, uh, out of a jar yeah. now, aren't you? Yeah, but, you know. It's a flat taste, though, Jack. <laughs> flat taste, very flat taste. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, uh, Excalibur. Yeah, nice. Oh, this is a, this is. This is a very your 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 eye is so unique that uh, you you should be in this is like the Blade Runner almost in a sense or almost Star Wars. Blade more has a Blade Blade Runner has a lot more detail. Um, well, I mean, for the book, I kept it all simple. I right. mean, it could have went outstanding for the book, but I kept it simple because I, I wanted to. A lot of people didn't know you can do three D in Photoshop, so I didn't want to like you know turn them away. I think think it's too it's too advanced of a of a book. Right, so just, it's fairly simple uh, in terms of the detail, but but visually appealing. Yeah, yeah, it it certainly is. And Stephen, I can't thank you enough. Um, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to give it a try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. 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 That's right. Um, all we need. All we need is that gift certificate to Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing so much. And uh, well, how would be the what would be the best way to contact you if they are interested of the yeah uh, sure. the of the Katinga or anything sure. else? Of that so I tell you what, I'm going to type in my email address, and then you can also contact me through Facebook. Just private message me. Yeah, um, I am him on Facebook. Okay, I'm going to I'm typing in my email address now. Should we should we put these addresses up on uh, MeWe? Yeah, go ahead. Definitely put you. You can share whatever you want. I'm pretty open. Okay. Um, I'm I'm not really private like a lot of people are. They're afraid to put anything out there. But I I just share everything. Well, so whenever whenever I post this uh, video, well, I don't want to see your dinner. You know, and I do light wave uh, meetings on on Twitch usually each Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, but probably not this Sunday because I'll probably be on your broadcast tomorrow. Well, actually, I might be because it's in the morning times from 10 to 1 o'clock oh. my time. Oh, I, think I, 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 I won't be on tomorrow. Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow. They that's that's tomorrow. Right. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, no, I guess we won't be doing yeah, tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday. I think you're going to do is. a broadcast, right? Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, the Sunday hanging. I was at seven Eastern, and oh, okay. uh, I think you gave us a lot to digest and to uh, reiterate. And plus, um, we would like to share some of our work too on screen. And yeah. I knew it wasn't going to be this show, uh, but certainly I know some guys want to share something on uh, 
on, on screen. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, Lou has a new video, as always, every week. Uh, he's got some new stuff going on, some potpourri of stuff. I don't even know what you called it on the video. It's a potpourri. It's a potpourri, yeah. It's a, it's a mixture of the Icarus, the taxi cab, the click on ship. Yeah, and Lou does uh, map paint masks, uh, particularly Aztec for uh, the starships and the like. And I, I just finished uh, uh, 350 uh, NX01, and I'm very pleased with it. I think I might have broken the curse. I might not be speaking too soon. Uh, <laughs> the curse was, Stephen, every time I attempted to build the Enterprise, and only the Enterprise, it would melt, fall down, break into shattered pieces, and really? don't work, everything. But then again, that was uh, many years ago, uh, six years ago, and I have more experience in building models. Uh, so that's probably what happened. It's I've got experience now. So that's that's a, a very important point that you made. If you want to get into uh, this sort of thing, it's just a matter of learning everything uh, yeah. about 3D printing. And you're the man to go to if they say, you know what, I'm too lazy. I'm going to buy it from Steven. <laughs> Oh, you know, so now one person mentioned mentioned to me that well, when three D printers get lower in price and everybody can like purchase them, then that's probably going to cut into to what I do. I said, well, no, because now, most people don't want to learn this stuff. No, yeah. uh, most people no most people get the printer and they use the ready to go stuff. Most right. people are not into doing the design work. Right. Yeah. So, so, so it's, it's basically the same, the same as scratch building. Normally yeah. you scratch build something because it's not available, because nobody has done it, because it doesn't exist. Right. So it's and it's a very similar sort of thing with with three D printing. You know, you you if you if you can get get hold of it, if you can give there's there's no point in in doing it. Right. Whereas with with three D printing, it's normally you get asked to do stuff or get hold of it because because they don't exist because it, it's not a it's it's not something that's like i uh, last week i 3d printed a um uh it was it's, it's like a a support for a, for a joystick for right. a simulator because it didn't exist and the person's hand was too right. small to actually fit the top of the triggers on the on the joystick so i had to build a little uh plate that actually went into the joystick so the hand could sit on top of it <laughs> it had to conform to the shape of the joystick, so it's it's, it's things like that whereby you know you, you build things that just don't exist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, kind of, it's like it's like uh, the three hundred and fifty and the toss. I mean, something that Stephen does would be handy if you, you know, like printing proper three D people right. that fits in oh, the enterprise. I just got a. I just got an offer yesterday. To do just that, to print 3D people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, for the two you know, like a high resolution you know, if, you print if you want to get two dimensional people, you just go to a bar, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to, I stay away from, I stay away from the bar. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank everybody who had joined us for this hangout. Uh, everybody on the live chat, wonderful chat. It is going to be posted along with the video. Uh, Stephen, if, you have, if you're if uh, you getting inspiring or peaking some ideas, you go to that chat. There's so okay. much there uh, that the they were tossing about between themselves. I'd like to thank everybody in the chat. I'd like to think about, I'd like to thank my usual suspects. That was uh, uh, Heath came up in earlier. And uh, too bad Liam didn't show up. And thank you, Carwin, for stopping by. I was really wanting you to stop by because you also have the experience in 3D printing as well as Jim. Thank you, Jim, for stopping by as well. Oh, you're welcome. And Jamie, thank you. And perhaps we'll see you tomorrow so you can share your stuff uh, more uh, more specifically because none of us actually could share because of Stephen. We're blaming him. <laughs> wait, till we, wait till we get off the air and we're going to talk about you steven anyway uh thank you lou uh for stopping by too your input is always of importance and randall the stoic man remains stoic and uh steven we're going to be still hanging in there for a few more minutes after the broadcast right. and i and this is your host uh, uh, Jack for the, I almost said it, uh, Jack for the uh, Across the Pond Hangouts as well as the Sunday Hangout on the Amazing Scale Modelers. Remember, everybody, the Google Plus is over. 
as of the 20th of February, Google Plus, uh, uh, the community there is gone. There are instructions. If you want to go to MeWe or you can go to Facebook. And if you don't want to go to either, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And if you want to participate in something, we're going to try something this year, uh, making shop cards. And of course, uh, Stephen, you don't have to ask. I'm going to send it to you as they get made. And uh, you can have your own shop cards. The shop card is basically a postcard with uh, our logo. See, this is the old one with the Google Plus on there. And yeah. that was MeWe. So this is a shop card. It's just uh, something to have and to hold and to cherish. Uh, no, you're not going to get married to it. Anyway, <laughs> for uh, stopping next tomorrow, we're going to uh, continue this conversation about 3D printing, how it fits in with what we are actually building. Until then, happy modeling, everyone. Good day. Bye-bye.